true, and uh, it is, of course, with a great uh, sadness and grief that I have to recall that our dear colleague, uh, friend and colleague and collaborator, Professor Vladimir Petrovich Gert, passed away uh, in January earlier this year, and he is still listed as one of the principal organizers of this event on the series website, and the first session of this conference, this morning's session, is dedicated to his memory. Well, of course, we, well, most of us have known Vladimir Petrovich as an engineering researcher and a very nice person, and he will always live in our hearts. His globally ramified research will influence our field for decades, I'm very sure of that. And his research interests were extremely broad, and one of the topics that he was active in throughout his whole academic career was, of course, computer algebra, and in particular, involutive Grobner bases. So it is a great pleasure to announce the first talk this morning, which is going to be on uh, a related topic on the design and implementation of inverse kinematics computation in robotics using real quantifier elimination based on comprehensive Grobner basis. And the first talk this morning will be presented by our Japanese colleagues remotely, uh, namely by Shudo Otaki, Professor Akira Terui, and Professor Masahiko Mikawa. Please. So hopefully the translation will start in a moment. And I give the floor to our Japanese colleagues, colleagues from Tsukuba. Uh, could you enable me for screen sharing, please? Yes, we can hear you. We can um, hear you could you well. enable uh, my screen sharing? Because uh, the Zoom says the host of disabled participant screen sharing. Um, no, we cannot see your screen yet, but we can see um, you. We can see yourself pretty well, yes. Well, um, the Zoom says host of disabled participant for screen sharing. So could you check the your setting for uh, permitting yes, can somebody help screen sharing? Us? I do have a screen sharing option. So perhaps it's on your side a problem of um, authorization with Zoom. I don't know. Yes, we'll check it in a moment, please. Just a couple of minutes, please. Uh, sorry, uh, the team still says that the host disabled the participant screen sharing. Yeah, so, кто там может помочь в чем там вопрос? Да, да, я понимаю, да, конечно. Это на нашей стороне проблема.
No, excuse me, it doesn't work yet. And that still says host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, so, oh, just a, just a minute, like, oh, mm -hmm. no, I couldn't get, uh, okay, just a minute, please. Uh, Oh, from your pretzel, okay. Mm. Let's see if it works. Now I'm trying to connect from my browser. Uh, could you please try to reconnect? Oh, okay. Dis I, I, will, and I, I will log off once. Okay, and I, I will try to log on again. Excuse me. Oh, it looks that uh, it still doesn't work, so mm, let's see. Uh, well, uh, okay. at least I, uh, you are saying it's working? Uh, no, oh, we, we now, oh, I, I, oh, now it looks uh, the sharing is working. Could you wait a moment, please? Yes, sure. Can you see the screen? It's work. It works. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry for making you wait. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Akira Tiri from the University of Tsukuba. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for making our presentation possible in this hybrid format. I hope we all we meet again at the next year's CAS conference in person. In this talk, I'm going to talk about motion planning of a robot manipulator. A manipulator is a kind of a robot with several arms called segments or links and connected with joints like in this picture. And the very end of the segment is called the end effector, like a human hand. Motion planning involves considerations for making the components of the robot move for the desired motion. In this picture, um, as you see, um, if we want to make the, the end effector reach to the desired position, such as a flower or a mango beer or whatever, we have to set the angles of the joint appropriate to appropriate position so that the end effector can reach to the desired position. 
For that purpose, we need a computation called the inverse kinematics computation, which I will explain in more detail. Uh, some of you may know that the inverse kinematic problems have been frequently solved with gravelar basis computation in computer algebra. For example, if the inverse kinematic problem is formulated as a system of polynomial equations, like F1 equals to, to F4 equals to zero, then uh, we set I as an um, ideal generated by F1, F2, F3, F4, and then we can compute the gravelar basis of I with respect to a certain monomial ordering to get G1, G2, G3, and G4. Then we solve the polynomial equations by first solving G1 equals, GYX equals to zero to get the X component of the roots. Then we put X values into the G to XY to get the uh, invariant equation G to Y equals to zero. And we solve it to get the Y component of the root, roots. And uh, by repeating this procedure, we get all the components of the roots for getting the uh, appropriate joint parameters. So our, at our previous contributions, we have made an implementation of uh, inverse schematic computation with Python and uh, computer algebra system research zero using the Grebler basis. Um, we had the following intentions. The first was for building an inverse schematic solver with free software. Um, we know that some inverse kinematic solvers have been proposed with using commercial computer algebra systems like uh, Mathematica or Maple. But on the other hand, in the robotics community, uh, a lot of software is developed as a free and open source software, uh, including the robot operating system, which is a middleware recognized as a de facto standard. So we aim that uh, they can easily incorporate it, uh, our implementation into the ROS. Another one was choosing an appropriate server for solving a system of polynomial equations. Those among those available in Python the various packages. In your previous implementation, we had some remaining issues. One was solving a system of polynomial equations without verification of the existence of the real roots. Another one was a repetitive computation of a gray brand basis, which um, would be better to be avoided if the inverse kinematic computation is repeated for many times. Now in this talk, we overcome these issues with the following ideas. For the first issue, we verify the existence of the real roots using an algorithm for quantified elimination based on comprehensive gravular systems called the CGS3 algorithm. And for the second issue, we solve the system of polynomial equations in the form of a CGS after replacing parameters with the given values. The outline of our talk is as follows. Uh, first, I will explain the formulation of the inverse schematic problem for the given system of manipulator. Then I will show the verification of the existence of the virus using the CGS3 algorithm. After that, I will explain um, the flow of solving inverse schematic problem with our implementation. Finally, I will explain the results of experiments. Now we are going to the formulation of the inverse schematic problem. And here is a three degree of freedom robot manipulator we will discuss in this talk, built with Lego mind sums EVT kit. It is an educational toy of bricks with servo motors, sensors, and a microcomputer for controlling these parts. So we have fun building a robot and controlling it with a program in various programming languages. Here, as I have explained before, uh, you can see the manipulator has segments, joints, and the end effector. The problem of motion planning consists of the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics. The forward kinematics is finding the position of the end effector from the given joint parameters. On the other hand, the inverse kinematics 
is finding joint parameters that correspond to the desired or given position and orientation of the end effector. Mathematically, a set of joint parameter is called the joint space and the set of position and the, the orientation of the, the end effector is called the configuration space or the, the, the operational space. Uh, this is a diagram of the components of the, this manipulator. As you see, this manipulator has seven joints with three of them that can rotate, which are joints one, four, and seven. And moreover, the ground is recognized as joint zero and the end effector is recognized as joint eight. So we set the joint space as a direct product of the unit circles representing the angles of joints one, four, and seven respectively. And we set the configuration space as RC space um, representing the position of the, the end effector. While moving the robot, we first solve the uh, forward kinematics problem for ex expressing the position of the end effector as a function of the angles of the joints. Then solve it the inverse kinematic problem for finding the angles of the joints for a given position of the end effector. Now we are going to solve the forward kinematic problem. First, we set the coordinate system for each joint according to the so-called denovit hartenberg convention. For joints from one to seven, we set the coordinate systems from sigma one to sigma seven as shown here. Moreover, we set the coordinate system sigma zero for joint zero on the ground and sigma eight at the end effector joint eight. Then we set parameters that specify the position and the orientation of sigma i with respect to sigma i minus one as shown here. From the coordinate systems, we define the transformation matrix i minus one ti, transforming uh, from sigma i to sigma minus i minus one with respect to sigma i minus one using the joint parameters as shown in the table. Then by multiplying these transformation matrices, we get T, the transformation matrix, and transforming from sigma eight to sigma zero. As a result, the forward kinematic problem is defined as follows. Let X, Y, Z be the coordinate of the, the position of the end effector. Then by this transformation of coordinate systems, X, Y, and Z are expressed as a function of theta one, theta four, and theta seven of the angles of joint one, four, and seven respectively. Then the inverse kinematic problem is derived as a system of polynomial equations as shown here. Please note that we have substituted the trig trigonometric functions with the corresponding variables like cosine theta i with c i and sine theta i with s i for one i equals to one for seven respectively. And we also added f four, f five, f six as constraints for trigonometric functions. Now we are going to talk about verification of the existence of real roots using the CGSQ method. Uh, please note that the uh, verification of the existence of real, real roots can be recognized as a problem of real quantifier elimination. Uh, you see the system of polynomial equations we have just derived with parameters x, y, and z. Then the system of equations can be regarded as this uh, quantified formula with uh, variables ci and si as quantified variables and x, y, and z as parameters. Let me show a brief introduction to quantified elimination algorithms based on the CGS. First, Weisfening has proposed a method using the CGS and counting the number of real roots of a system of polynomial equations. Later, Fukasaku and others have proposed an improvement using an improved CGS algorithm by Suzuki and Sato and further improvements. Now, their method is called the CGSQ algorithm. 
The keys to the CGS algorithms are the CGS computations and the theory of real root counting for counting the number of real roots of the system of equations. So I will give a brief introduction to the theory of real root counting. Uh, let the bold face X be the tuple of variables from X1 to Xn. I be a zero dimensional ideal in the polynomial ring R of X. And let VRI and VCI be the affine varieties of I in the field of real and complex numbers, respectively. Then we see that um, the residue class ring Rx over I is isomorphic to a finite dimensional vector space over R. So we let the uh, basis of the vector space as a set of vectors from V1 to Vd. Then we consider multiplication maps in the residue class ring as follows. First, for polynomials f and h in, and the vectors vi and vj in the residue class ring, um, de define theta hij as a multiplication map as for the given f multiplying h vi vj to f. Then let q hij be the trace of the map theta hij. Please note that the indices uh, i and j run from 1 to d. Uh, finally, we define a d-dimensional square matrix MHI as the IJ component is equal to QHIJ. Uh, please note that by the definition of the matrix, uh, the, MH, the matrix MHI is a real symmetric matrix. Then by the theory of counting the number of real roots, we have the following. Uh, let sigma MHI be the signature of MHI um, defined as using the uh, positive and negative eigenvalues of matrix MHI as shown here. Then the theorem tells us that the signature of MHI equals to the number of points C in the variety uh, that satisfies uh, HC is greater than zero minus the number of points C in the varieties satisfying the HC of C is smaller than zero. And uh, moreover, a corollary tells that uh, for polynomial H equals to one, the signature of the matrix M1I is equal to the number of points in the uh, this variety, which is equal to the number of real roots of the polynomial system. Then we can count the number of real roots with the Gauss rule of signs. Let a chi of t be the characteristic polynomial of the matrix M1i, as defined as here. And we also define the chi of negative t as shown here. And furthermore, we define the numbers uh, values S positive and S negative by using the number of sign changes in the sequence of questions which appears in uh, the chi of t and chi of negative t respectively, then we can count the number of real roots as s positive minus s negative. Now we are going to explain our method for solving the inverse kinetic problem with our implementation. Our method is divided into two parts, the preparation steps and the main steps. In the preparation steps, um, we have uh, make some preparation before solving the inverse kinematic problem by the following the CGSP algorithm. In the main steps for the given values of parameters, uh, we solve the system of polynomial equations after verifying the existence of the real roots. Please recall that we have the system of polynomial equations that's shown here with six variables, CI and SI, and uh, three parameters in the coefficient x, y, and z. Then the preparation steps are as follows. First, we compute the CGS of the idea with respect to the Lex ordering. Let the set uh, from S1, G1 to SAGL be a CGS uh, in which the SI is an algebraic pattern and the GI is the corresponding wavelength basis. Next, from the computed CGS, 
we choose a subset satisfying the following conditions. The first condition A provides that the set of parameters contain tuples of, of real numbers. The second condition B provides that after substituting parameters with values, the Grebner basis is not a zero polynomial set, and the idea generated by the basis is zero dimensional. Finally, the third condition C provides that the, this idea does not contain one. At last, um, for the chosen basis G of LJ, calculate the characteristic polynomial of a, the matrix M1i and let chi LJ of T be that of that characteristic polynomial. The main steps are as follows. First, for the given value C of parameters, find a pair of SAJ and GLJ from the CGS satisfying the value C belongs to uh, SAJ. Then put the value C in the coefficient of the characteristic polynomial and with the calculable signs, calculate the number of uh, real roots of the polynomial system. If the polynomial system has real roots, then solve the polynomial system to get the, the joint angles. And here's our implementation of the preparation steps. Uh, step one is calculated on a computer GP system research here with uh, the CGS implementation by Professor Nabeshima. Step two is calculated by hand with research zero and Mathematica. And step three is calculated on research zero with our implementation. And here's the implementation of our main steps. In the main steps, we use Python with SynPy, a package for computer algebra with Python, and resource C connected with the OpenXM infrastructure. We use Python mainly and call resource C from Python via OpenXM for necessary computations. We call resource C for substituting x, y, z in the characteristic polynomial with the given values. Then with the Python program, we count the number of real roots. And if we find that the polynomial system has real roots, then we solve the polynomial system by substituting x, y, z be the input values. Now I'm going to show the results of the experiments. Uh, we had experiments for randomly chosen about certain position of the end effector within the feasible region. And we have solved the inverse schematic problem to obtain configuration of the joints, then have calculated the position of the end effector by the forward kinematic computations and estimated the error of the calculated position. And please note that the coordinates of the uh, position of the end effector x, y, z are given as ratio numbers with the number of digits in the denominator smaller than three. And we have compared the, the implementation of the present method with the implementation of, of our pre previous method. Um, this is a, a block diagram of our previous method implementation. In our previous method, the inverse schematic problem is solved as follows. The program is written in Python and the resource here connected with OpenXM. For the, uh, the input values X, Y, and Z, we call resource here for computing the Grebner basis after substituting the parameters with input values. Then we solve the polynomial system to get the angles of the joints. The computing environment is as shown here using the uh, virtual computing environment. And these are test results showing the average computing times for each server. The left bar shows the computing time with our previous method, and the right bar shows the computing time with our present method. In the left bar of the previous method, the green part shows the computing time for Grebner basis. And in the right side bar of the present method, the blue part shows the computing time for verification of the real roots. And in both parts, the yellow part shows computing time for solving the polynomial system. 
with the present method, you see that uh, we solve the inverse kinematic problem in a smaller amount of time than that of the previous method with the verification of the existence of the real groups. And this chart shows the average errors, absolute errors of the inverse kinematic computations. Since the original size of the manipulator is around 100 millimeters, in both methods, the solution seems sufficiently accurate. And please note that in both methods, all the given inverse kinematic problems have been solved correctly. Now we are going to discuss uh, the summary and the future work. In this talk, we have proposed a method of solving an inverse kinematic problem of three degree of freedom manipulators by verifying the existence of the real roots with the CGSP algorithm and using the CGS for avoiding repeated computation of gradient basis. The results of the experiments have shown that the proposed method seem more efficient than our previous method. But of course, I think that we also have to compare our implementation with uh, other implementations. Our future work includes the following. First, we need to automate uh, uh, computation in the preparation steps. And second, we need verification of the existence of real roots in the case the values of parameters are given in floating point numbers. In this case, evaluation of the errors that occurred by floating point number arithmetic will be needed. To extend our method, uh, adding constraints with inequalities or inequations in the inverse kinematic problem will be our next task. Also, we would like to consider applying the proposed method to mechanical systems with more degrees of freedom. And now at the end of my talk, um, I'd like to say a few words about my personal memory of Professor Gert. Probably I got to know him when I was a graduate student uh, on the occasion that my supervisor, Professor Sasaki, was a close friend of his. And I think Professor Gate had visited Tsukuba several times at that time. Uh, I have attended his talks at seminars. After I got the job at the university, it was at the CAST conference that I made my first presentation at an international conference by a single author that was held at PASO in 2003. Since then, every time we met at the CAST conference and the other conferences, we had, he has always been interested in my research and encouraged me in my work. Every time we met, he asked me, how is your work going? And we had some talks on the research and other things. And at the end of our talks, he said to me, please keep your back. He was always bright and kind to me. As for encouragement in the research, I also thank the CASC conference and the people who gave me much encouragement and motivation. I feel that I was raised by the CAS conference and the community in part, and I'd like to give some back to the CAS community. Uh, this is my, uh, my main reason for working as a PC member right now. Especially, I thank Professor Gert very much for his encouragement and kindness. From now on, I'd like to continue my work to bring something new that the uh, CAS people and Professor Gert would be interested in. That's all from, from my talk. and. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker for the very interesting presentation. <laughs> Any questions or comments, please? Yes, Sergei. Uh, I, I have a short uh, question. What is the level of complexity of comprehensive uh, Grubner basis? And uh, how many polynomials uh, was, uh, were in your uh, experiments? Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. In our experiments, uh, um, we had uh, about 32 or 33 um, partitions uh, in our uh, comprehensive gravity basis. And the, uh, is this um, uh, enough answer? Yes, I guess so. Uh, any further questions? comments or remarks, please. Uh, actually, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, as far as I can see, in most cases, 
the system of polynomial equations that you look at has uh, several real solutions. Is that the case? So oh, the, the yes, real uh, solution uh, is in uh, general not unique, right? Right, yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, yes, um, I, I, I figured that, uh, uh, but uh, I figured that uh, uh, exactly what you said in counting the number of real roots. So uh, the distinguish uh, some yeah, um, real roots to distinguish and using choosing the appropriate one will be yes. uh, among our next task. Yes. Yes, that's my question. That was my question. <laughs> So that's the direction of future research, as I understand, yes. right? Yes. Okay, so thank you so much once again for the very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. And we proceed to the next talk this morning. And it is also a remote talk, so hopefully with no further technical complications on our side. And the next presentation will be made by Professor Francois Bollier. Sebastian Falkensteiner, Mark Paul Nordmann, and Omar Leon Sanchez, who will speak on the relationship between differential algebra and tropical differential algebraic geometry. Please. Thank you very much, Timur. It was very nice to give this talk here. And yes, uh, uh, unfortunately, Francois, uh, could you please speak a bit louder, just a bit louder? Or maybe we louder? can help. Oh. Yes, we can see you. <laughs> We can see you very well. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Maybe I... And like that, it's better? Yes, yes, much better. Okay, thanks. So it's unfortunate. I wish I could have come to Sochi and... Uh, Maybe next time. <laughs> yes. I do not see your presentation yet. Yes, now we can see that. So maybe the full screen mode would help. Sorry. Yes, perfect. It's okay like that? Yes, thanks. Okay. So before starting the talk, I would, say, I would like to say a few words about uh, Vladimir Gert. So I, I met him in, um, oh in the early 90s, actually. And, uh, at this time, he, he was coming to, he was in France, uh, considering the possibility to get a position as a, in the French uh, academic system. And um, we, I was a PhD student, or I had just uh, defended my PhD at this uh, time, and uh, we discussed a lot. And we discussed a lot about uh, Russian novels like uh, Bulgakov uh, books, Ma Master and Marguerite, and uh, Google, uh, Google novels. And I always had the feeling that uh, Vladimir Gert was a bit like uh, one of those uh, characters from uh, all those books. So each time I read one of these novels, I think that reminds me of uh, Vladimir Gert. So it's, it's not a very scientific uh, <laughs> souvenir. I, have, I also have scientific souvenir, but uh, mostly I remind him as a human being. Anyway, let's move to the talk. So this talk is a joint work between with uh, Sebastian uh, Falkensteiner, Mark Paul Norman, and uh, Omar Leon Sanchez. And the, um, well, quite some work was done in the tropical differential algebraic geometry recently. There are a few papers which were published. And I could say that initially, what we had in mind with uh, Sebastian Mark, Mark Paul was to try to present uh, few things which were still a bit technical in some uh, more simplified way to, so that uh, the simplicity of some ideas uh, could uh, show up. And doing this, we could simply, we, we found a result which uh, could simplify a technical point in a, in a major result in a tropical differential algebra geometry. And uh, I will present this uh, in this talk. And well, I would say that uh, if you are interested by the topic and you can read the, I wish, well, I suggest you read our uh, paper in uh, the CASC proceedings because we really, I think we could really simplify many things and uh, get uh, simple ideas. Uh, uh, well, sure. 
so differential algebra is a, is a pretty old uh, theory. It's not pretty old. It was uh, initiated by Ritt in the early 19th, 20th century. And it was uh, developed by uh, Golshin, who was a Ritt uh, PhD student. And it's mostly an algebraic theory for polynomial differential equations. On the other hand, uh, tropical differential algebraic geometry, so TDLG for short, was uh, founded by uh, Dima Grigoriev in 2015, so it's much more recent. And it was, uh, it's sort of a differential analog of uh, tropical, algebra, tropical algebra that you may know as a uh, mean plus algebra for the study of formal power series solution, so FPS or form formal power series for polynomial differential equations. And uh, since uh, tropical algebra was, uh, is is interesting for uh, in um, for designing models and simple models when uh, in, in particular in the symbiont project when you want to model in biology it was interested interesting to well, i was interested by this uh, topic for that reason not sure that it cannot be applied to <laughs> in biological modeling but uh, there are very interesting uh, theoretical problems so on the first slide, I told you that there is uh, an important result in uh, TDLG. It is the so-called fundamental theorem of TDLG. It was uh, published by Aroka, Gare, and Togani in 2016. And it is this result that we, for which we improve uh, technical point. And the common topic of both uh, theories is uh, well, the existence problem of FPS solution of ODE systems. So I will sketch the basic ideas, what is simple and what is not so simple in the topic and uh, to make uh, the relationship. So let's start with the simplest uh, possible example, one autonomous equation. So we are looking for uh, an unknown function y of x and the equation is said to be autonomous because the x independent variable does not show up in the, in the equation. So if you want to compute a FPS solution for this equation, you just differentiate infinity many times the, the equation. You rename the derivatives of the unknown function y using a, a new symbol in order to forget the, the differential relationship. So you end up with a, an infinite polynomial system. Let's say you solve it. And what you get is an infinite tuple, let's say uh, an arc you have an example here, and it's just if you just plug the, the obtained value in the generic formula, which is here, and you get a FPS solution centered at the origin for your ODE. The nice point with autonomous equation is that the expansion point does not matter. I mean, the very same arc provides you a FPS solution everywhere. So if you take even a generic expansion point alpha, you keep the very same arc, and if you plug this uh, arc in this uh, generic formula, you get a FPS solution centered at uh, this uh, expansion point. This is not true anymore for non-autonomous equation. So the next equation is not autom autonomous because the x independent variable occurs in the equation, and the process is a variant. So you just differentiate, you rename the derivatives of y with the new symbols. And at the polynomial system solving stage, you need to choose the expansion point. And uh, the arc depends on the expansion point. So let's uh, choose alpha is equal to 1. Why not? And then you just solve. You plug in the generic formula, which is here, but for the chosen expansion point and you get the FPS solution centered at uh, the expansion point you had uh, chosen. Observe that, uh, well, I chose the value alpha is equal to one. I could have chosen many other values. I just take, took care, as you may imagine, not to annihilate the leading coefficient of the, of the ODE and of the derivatives of the ODE. Otherwise, I would have had problems. But if you don't annihilate the, this leading coefficient, the, 
the polynomial system solving states is very is straightforward. So let's summarize. So as I have just said, you everything is very simple except if uh, you with the arc you are trying to compute annihilates the leading coefficient. The arc or the, even the the initial values that you I mean the beginning of the arc you are uh, considering annihilate the leading coefficient of the differentiate system. If you have such a constellation, then uh, many things can occur and then uh, the real tricky problems show up. And you may have no FPS solution or of infinitely many. There are many things which can happen, many issues. And let's uh, just mention that uh, there is a reduction trick which is available. And quite often when you have a non-autonomous equation, you can reduce it to an autonomous system by uh, renaming the, by performing a change of independent variable. And somehow you just consider the X independent variable as a new dependent variable subject to uh, this uh, differential equation. But of course, if you do that, uh, this uh, easy trick, you just move the problem. If you have a deep problem, you will not solve it with uh, such an easy trick. You just move the problem. What if you add a problem with the expansion point, after the reduction, it becomes a problem on the initial values. Now, differential algebra. <coughs> so in his books, and uh, through also for Kolchin, actually Ritt does not even mention autonomous or non-autonomous equation. It's, it's a word which has, does not uh, occur in uh, differential algebra. And he only considers autonomous systems. It's obvious that uh, Ritt knew that, um, well, had heard about uh, non-autonomous equation. And uh, we can imagine that he had in mind the reduction trick I mentioned just before. So anyway, when you have non-autonomous -autonom equation, the existence problem of FPS solution at any expansion point, so the expansion point doesn't matter, as I told you, the, and as long as you feel free to move the initial values in order to avoid uh, the tricky situation of uh, the, the constellation of the uh, leading coefficient, so if you feel free then to, uh, to change your uh, initial values, the, the existence problem of FPS solution is equivalent to uh, the decision problem does the differential polynomial one belong to the differential ideal generated by the, your ODE system. And this problem turns out to be algorithmic. You can solve it by differential elimination characteristic sets, regular chains. I will not develop at all because that would require another talk, but uh, it's fully algorithmic. Нет пока. Так а что ты значит неправильно или нас? Ну они что-то сместили немножко. Больше я просто выключить звук участникам, которые не выступают. So in topical differential algebra, algebra geometry, the situation is a bit different since you have um, you have differential equation with formal power series uh, coefficients, and for this reason, so in f of x, so let's say centered at the origin somehow, and for this reason, yeah, there are two there are two you know, this uh, has two consequences. First, the reduction to the autonomous case is impossible because you would have a serious equation, equation which would be formal power series, and we don't want to, well, it is not covered by the theory. And it uh, forces also us to look for solution centered at the origin. So we don't have the choice of the expansion point anymore. In this setting, things are much more complicated and the existence problem of FPA solution, well, at least if you if you replace the formal power series uh, coefficient by a polynomial over the rational, turns out to be decidable. It's in the, uh, the important paper by Denef and Lipschitz in 1984. 
the proof is uh, difficult. I'm still working on it. I one day I think it's not correct. Uh, one day I think it's correct. Uh, <laughs> today I think it's correct. <laughs> so it's decidable. Uh, it's a pretty theoretical algorithm actually. Not very useful. Well, very interesting, but not very useful. And as you can see with this other remark, if you want to decide in the same setting if there is at least one non zero solution, Singer in 1978 proved that uh, this is undecidable. So you have a the algorithm provided by Dennis and Lipschitz uh, does not permit you to compute the solution. Anyway, so this proves that uh, the solution is much more tricky. The fundamental theorem of TDHG does not solve, does not uh, give us uh, any new result on the deep problem. It only states an equivalence. It is deep, but on not on uh, this. And let's say this. So let's assume that sigma is a differential ideal. Let's assume that the base field F is algebraically closed and uncountable and of characteristic zero. Then the set of supports of the FPS solution of uh, sigma exactly is the solution set of the so-called tropicalization of uh, sigma. This is what is written here. So in, on the next slide, I will explain, of course, uh, those notations. And the result I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the talk is that this uncountability hypothesis of the base field can just be dropped, okay? We don't need it. So, basic, some basic definition. So if you have a formal power series phi like that, its support is just the set, it's a set of integers. It's a set of uh, integer i, such that the coefficient s sub i is different from zero. And the valuation of the series is infinity if the series is identically zero. Otherwise, it's the minimal element of the support. So the left hand side of the equality of the fundamental theorem is very easy to understand. The support of the solution of sigma, well, you take, you consider all the solution of sigma, FPS solution of sigma, and for each solution, you take the, its a support. So this is a set of subset of the of integer numbers. Let's move to the other, the right hand side of the of the equality. And for this, I will take a few examples and start with the monomial. So let's take this uh, monomial here. So x to the square times y, and uh, I would like to tropicalize it at this uh, support. So remind uh, so support zero one two. So what is the idea? The idea is this one. You just assume that uh, you can that uh, y y of x is a formal power series like that. It's a polynomial actually with a three non-zero coefficient. So it's a degree two polynomial, a dense degree two polynomial, and you would like to know the valuation of the monomial obtained. Of the, or, of the formal power series obtained by evaluating this monomial over that series. So the least degree, you have a degree zero here times x2, you would have degree two. So the, real, the result is just two. You could have many interesting examples, but uh, any, let's go quickly on, on this in order to save time. So the same monomial here, another formal power series, just the monomial A2 times X to the square. And if you evaluate this monomial over that series, you get a valuation for. We are in differential algebra, so you can have Y between square bracket X is just Y prime with the cube. So if you differentiate this FPS once you lose the A0 coefficient, you get degree two, you raise to the cube, you get degree six, and you get this. And if your monomial as here just annihilates completely over the formal power series, then the valuation is infinity. So tropicalizing one monomial at a support is very easy. It's just uh, computing uh, the valu valuation over uh, after evaluation. 
now let's move to polynomials. So I've chosen one, monomial, one polynomial, a famous uh, example by Ritt, y prime to the square minus 4u. And I will do it on two, two slides. On these slides, all the supports I will consider are supports of solutions of this uh, ODE. And on the next slide, I will take supports which, are, uh, which correspond to no solution of this ODE. But first, here is the solution. So th the two solutions of this ODE are either the zero function or the family of parabola, x plus a constant c to the square, and the corresponding su supports are the empty set for the zero uh, series, or zero and two and two for uh, this family of parabola. And the support is two if uh, the constant c is zero. Strictly speaking, in the theory, I should perform what I did in the former slide, I mean, computing the topicalization of all the monomials, we take many different numbers and take the minimum. But it's easier to understand if you just see the list of the valuation instead of uh, before computing the minimum. So this ODE, if I plug the zero function in Y, of course, both monomials vanish. And I just uh, see that on the, on the computation. If I take this, the same ODE with uh, this formal power series, this monomial A2 times x to the square, I think that it's possible that both monomials cancel each other because the valuation is the same. If the, if the valuation had been different for the two monomials, uh, cancellation would not be possible, actually. So we see that both monomials may cancel each other. However, as you can see, over the solution here, is that uh, it doesn't, cancellation does not occur for all values of A2, it only occurs for the value A2 is equal to one. But of course, this does not show up in the computation here. Let's move now to supports of uh, FPS, which are not supports of solutions. So I take the polynomial a degree one polynomial, A0 plus A1x, there are no solutions of that form for this ODE. And I would like to see, to, to get a proof, that uh, there is no such a solution for this ODE. And I don't get this proof when I topicalize the ODE over this support. I see two valuations zero, so somehow cancellation could be possible for some value. Well, you, we know in advance that there is no solution, but we don't see it in, in this computation. However, if you differentiate over this example at least once, you see that, so this is the first derivative of the ODE, which must be, which, uh, must be annihilated by the solution if it is a solution. And uh, if I topicalize this uh, derivative over the very same uh, support, I see that one of the monomials annihilates and the other one does not. So I have a proof that there are no solution of that form for this ODE. So if you understood the example, you can understand the definition of what is the solution of the topicalization of a polynomial. It's just translate what we have said, seen on the slide. So let's start with the monomial, which is a sum <coughs> A polynomial which is a sum of monomial. You view trop of f, you should view it as a function of uh, n unknown support. Uh, n support because I'm assuming that uh, there are n uh, unknown functions. And you can have uh, systems of uh, ODE in n, uh, y1, y2, up to y sub n. So and you will say that the tuple of n support is a solution of trop f, either if all monomial annihilate or if the minimum value, you, re you evaluate all, mon you all monomials over the support and you take the valuation and you want the minimal val obtained value to be obtained at at least two different monomials. So that the cancellation is at least possible. It seems at least possible. So the other condition is this one. If there exist two monomials, two different monomials, such that the minimum value 
of uh, each uh, the topicalization of each, each monomial is reached over those two monomials. Thus, since the definition translates what you have seen on the slide, on the, on the examples, in the fundamental theorems of uh, tropical differential algebra geometry, there is one inclusion which is obvious. The support of the solution of sigma is a subset, at least a subset of the solution of the tropicalization of sigma. The difficult inclusion is, is the converse one. It needs sigma to be the differential ideal. This requirement is due to the fact that in order to prove that uh, SPS is not a solution of an OD, you may need to differentiate the OD. You, possibly you would not see it on the OD itself. So we want to have in the set sigma all the derivatives which could be needed. So we want sigma to be a differential ideal. We need the base field to be algebraically closed because we have a polynomial uh, system solving this state and we want it to be easy. And well, we, we want F to be uncountable since we look for solution in a FPS solution with coefficient in the base field F. And uh, if this hypothesis, we drop in this paper. So the idea, so the, there is a, the key proposition the most difficult part in the paper, in, in the Aroka, Garret, Togani paper, and in other papers also, is an approximation theorem. And there are some other examples in the Deneff and Lipschitz uh, paper in 1984 also. So uh, all those works are pretty much related. So let's assume that uh, you have this differential ideal sigma. And by, by some theoretical result from uh, Ritt and Kolchin, you can assume that they are presented by just finitely many differential polynomial J sub i. So let's enumerate the derivatives of the y sub i. There are many different differential indeterminate, but anyway, let's assume that you can number them, v0, v1, v2. Let's enumerate the derivative of the G sub i. So G sub i are those polynomial, evaluated at x is equal to 0. And remem remember what we did when we uh, computed formal power series solution of non-autonomous equation. So you de differentiate, you evaluate at x is equal to zero because we look for solution at the origin, and we call those polynomial f0, f1, f2. For any k, so you uh, let's consider sigma k in the set of the polynomial up to index k, f sub i and they feature only finitely many of the derivatives of the y up to say some index uh, kappa. So you have this uh, truncated system included in this uh, Noetherian polynomial ring. Assume s is any support, define s sub k as the algebraic variety defined by the sigma k. So it's a you take solution in f and you want all the equation from index zero up to index k to be zero. And s sub k comma s is a subset of this algebra variety of all the zero which are compatible with the support. Well, we want non-zero coordinates at some, for some uh, indices, and we want non-zero coordinates at uh, all indices i which belong to the support. And the proposition is that, well, if uh, k sub s is different from the empty set at each uh, k, then the infinite system has solution. You will have a, you know, the full uh, system as solution. It's not that obvious, and there are over some fields, well, it's not an, well, those results sometimes look obvious if you don't know them, but they are not. And uh, on over some fields, there are counter examples. There are examples in situation where uh, you would have a solution for each k, but not for the infinite system. So it's far from uh, a straightforward statement. But in this case, working on, uh, on the topic, I think we could uh, obtain pretty proofs which are pretty easy. It took a few years to get the pretty easy proofs. <laughs> so. Everything is easy when you have understood it, but uh, 
that would look easy at the beginning. So I will just conclude the talk with a few slides, well, almost the, the last slide. So I will not give the proofs here. We give three proofs in the paper, which all have a common scheme. So it's uh, it's nice to see that there are many different ways to prove the, this, uh, propo this key proposition. So let's read the remark anyway. So the, the field F must be algebraically closed because we solve uh, polynomials. In all published paper, F is supposed to be uncountable. The proposition, which is here, is likely to hold in the algebraic closure of the field of the rational number. They are counter because uh, there is a corollary in the Deneff and Lipschitz uh, 1984 paper, which proves that uh, the proposition could not well, would not hold. I, I've written likely not to hold because of the, you, you have to write precise statement. It depends on your statement, of course. And uh, what we proved actually is, is that it is sufficient for the field F to have a sufficient many to have a, a countable transformant degree over so some field of definition of sigma. The field of definition is the field defined by the coefficient. You can see informally you could view it like that. So if you have at least at most countably many uh, transcendental elements over this field of definition of sigma, well, you easily build a solution. And we, prov we provide uh, three proofs, one based on ultra products, which were designed uh, from the Deneff and Lipschitz paper by Mark Paul uh, Norman. And uh, I'm very happy that his proof could be published actually. There is one uh, based on a very general result for model theory which was uh, pointed out by uh, Omar uh, Leon Sanchez, and one on uh, Long's uh, infinite null shell and sats. And they have a, all of them have a common scheme. So sh short bibliography on the topic. So on differential algebra, these are the two books of Rip, uh, the book of Rip and the book of Kolchin. The Deneff and Lipschitz paper was published in the Mathematician Alone in 1994, and the paper by Singer, which is very important also, in 1978. And on TDHG, you have uh, the founding paper by uh, Dima Grigoriev, and it is published in a journal, but I've, I've cited here the, the archive paper, but it is in a journal, I'm sorry, Dima. The fundamental paper by uh, Aroka, Gary, and Togani in 2016. And I'm mentioning the recent ISAC 2020 uh, paper that I published with uh, Christian Garret, Mercedes Ayesh, Mark Paul Norman, Zenab Togani, and uh, Sebastian Falkensteiner at ISAC. And there is a, a GSC version uh, which should be published uh, in, should be in a short while. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Francois, for the very interesting presentation. Any questions, comments, or remarks, please? Uh, actually, I do have a question, Francois. So I understand that the main command that you are using, a tropicalized polynomial, is implemented in Maple now. Is that right? Uh, it's on in a private package. We I did not mention it. We, are, we did not mention it in our uh, Casco paper because the the software is a bit uh, too simple today, and um, we couldn't. There is, we have uh, many ideas to develop it. For instance, in implementing the proposition of three dot one by uh, Deneff and Lipschitz, which, in my, as I far as I know, was never implemented, and then uh, it would be um, a further Casco paper uh, describing an implementation. But today it's uh, ba very, very bizarre, just a very basic implementation, not worth being mentioned in the paper. I see. And also my second question is this. Uh, you had quite a number of very illuminating examples in your presentation, very simple and straightforward. But how does this command behave with big polynomials, with uh, many variables mm. and in several dimensions? And of high degree. I mean, you, you, the things like that. Yes, yes. For example, yes. So, what if the polynomial oh, is really complex? 
if you have several well variables and high degree polynomial, are there any estimates on the efficiency of the command? Oh, I did not take care too much to the efficiency because it's still a draft. It's mostly for understanding uh, theorems and uh, some at some point you want to do some computation and then when I compute by hand, I always end up by making a mistake, <laughs> which makes me lose a lot of time. So I prefer to implement things to have uh, things computed uh, nicely. I the, see. I, you have only here one uh, differential indeterminate, but you could have uh, something much more sophisticated here. I did not show on the on the, the slide, but you can have many different. Uh, you could have many different uh, non function and you could have uh, symbolic supports also. Okay. To see what looks what uh, what could look like. Uh, what uh, the tropicalization of a polynomial could uh, look like. For the efficiency on large polynomials, I did not take care, honestly. So I think there might be application of all this theory in a differential elimination in order to, when you want to control the splitting tree of uh, when you consider all cases. It does something vanish. Uh, you consider separately a particular case or just a general case. And maybe sometimes the, gen the particular case uh, does not make sense because you are looking for solutions which have uh, some given support. And then the support could help to cut some branches, which can lead to very complicated computation sometimes. So that could be useful for that. Uh, I'm not sure it's a very applied result, honestly. So it's a very interesting theoretical thing, problem which uh, gave me many insight of m other things. So, so I'm very happy to have uh, had a look to this uh, theory. But okay. yes, as I such, see. it's not very applied. Okay, thank you very much. Any further questions, comments or remarks, please? Well, if not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.
Okay, dear colleagues, let's resume. We proceed with our morning session. And the next speaker is Professor Viktor Fedorovich, Admiral of Moscow State University, who will speak on integrability condition as algebraic equations. Yes, Please. And before, I'd like to say a couple words about Vladimir Gets. Нужно включить микрофон, пожалуйста. I'd like to say a couple words about Vladimir. He prepared 243 scientific articles, 10 books. He prepared 34 lectures, courses, 10 master thesis. Nine PhD thesis, one consulting thesis for doctorship of sciences. This is um, Vladimir in 2002. He um, was uh, in committees of many conferences. Простите, большая просьба в микрофон говорить. Он направленный. Вот, микрофон повернуть немножко, чтобы звук шел вот в него. То есть вот так. Да-да, пожалуйста, вот так. Владимир, in particular, Владимир founded this conference, CASC. This is from data of CASC conference, Ernst Mayer and Владимир Гепт. He was a real leadership. Where is the captain? Is there is the captain's bridge? Vladimir quickly became the soul of the any company. He was in particular, he was a great scientist and a very well educated tour guide. Viktor Fyodorovich. Так, я не могу показывать, ну ладно. Обычно к экрану человек, ну ладно. Хорошо. К сожалению, указка не работает на этих экранах в принципе. Так. Владимир had a clear mind. Uh, this has allowed him to ask wonderful questions during conference reports. Always to the point. Without any self-promotion. He was very humble. And he was very good guide. Um, we were with him in many, many interesting places. In Greece, in Germany, in France, in Italy, so in all the world. I mm, remember his mm, excursion in mm, Japan, in Beijing, in Jerusalem, and many places. Yeah. This is uh, Schliemann's excavations in Pelop Peloponnese. A distinctive feature of Vladimir was great respect for people, for each person, and people felt it. He took great care of those who were with him. Vladimir never spoke badly about anyone. He criticized, of course, but only in specific cases. Vladimir was a believer and uh, observed church paths and rituals without advertising it in any way. Professor Gert made numerous contributions to the fields of symbolic computation, differential algebra, and applications in physics. He was an excellent scientist and a kind-hearted and considerable man. He was a nice friend. Yes. And now about integrability. Please, 
Ja. Открытие там экранный режим. Лучше ХЗ у нас. Спасибо. Я позволю себе тогда перейти сюда. Так вот, about integrability. When an ordinal differential equation system, the integrals of motion satisfy the relation. Hmm. I have no pointer. Yeah. The integrals should satisfy also some additional properties. For Hamiltonian systems нельзя, нету здесь изображения. Мы еще нельзя. А это важно на самом деле указывать. Ну ладно. Что ж. Итак. Интеграл должны удовлетворять дополнительным проводом. Это либо аналитичность, мироморфность, или, допустим, они должны she would be in evolution for mechanical problems. System is called integrable if it has enough numbers of the integrals. For integrability of an autonomous planar system, it's enough to have a single integral. Integrability is a very important property of the system. In particular, if a system is integrable, then it's exactly solvable by quadrature. Let we have um, the planar autonomous system. If we found the first integral of motion, a uh, uh, mm, function which is constant along some domain, you can uh, rewrite function y via x and c1 and uh, after that we can uh, rewrite time via integrals from this function. After that we, we can mm, have uh, mm, symbolic solution of the system if you know this integral. But generally integrability is very rare property. But the system may depend on parameters. The task, it's the task, our task is to find the values of these parameters at which the system is integrable. The local, we have local technique of local analysis. Generally, the global integrals does not exist, but it may exist at some values of the system parameters. We solve the necessary conditions of the local integrability in the parametric space, and we mm, can mm, have uh, some sets of parameters at which the system has such integral. If you mm, find these integrals, you, mm, you find uh, the solution, exact symbolic solution. In quadrature, maybe we are integrals, but you will have solution. And uh, we say about local integrability, so integrability near one some points. But mm -hmm. yeah. Да. А где она видна? А здесь я вижу. Прекрасно. Нету. Uh, so, C. This is uh, some points. Really, this is stationary points. Stationary points, are, there are points where uh, right-hand side of equation equals zero. So, this is point where derivation are zero. So, this is unstable point. And this point is very interesting. Uh, for analysis, for local analysis. And uh, if you need to have global integral function, and uh, if this is smooth enough function, uh, the condition of existence such integral, uh, in particular, the, the existence in local integrals, integrals in each point. Yes. We have some property in uh, whole domain, 
uh, it should be in the points also. But um, we have local analysis for uh, integrability in the um, stationary points. So we can use this property for uh, finding of uh, global integral. Uh, this uh, mm, approach was uh, mm, mm, was used before for analysis of such system. This is um, deeply generated system of equations and uh, with uh, five mm, free parameters. And for these parameters, by this technique, we have had seven solutions of condition of integrability. We find for each of them uh, integrals of the motion, and uh, so we have seven solution of such system for voluntary values of parameters. Now, we um, would like to use this technique for uh, linear system. And uh, there are um, good technique. Um, technique of normal form was produced by Henri Poincaré for investigation of system of non-linear ordinary differential equations. It is based on the maximal simplification of right hand sides of these equations by invertible transformation. Uh, many people walked in this direction. Birgov, Cherry, André Dupri, Gustafsson, Ziegel, Moser, and Alexander Dmitrievich Bruno. I mm, used technique mm, by Professor Bruno. I will not say about mm, brief, I can not, I have no time for explanation of these formulas, but you have equation, you can rewrite your equations in this form. I mean this is system equations, this is E uh, from e 1 to N, N equations. And uh, mm, first of all, we see this uh, in the domain of stationary points, so there is no constant terms. The first terms is linear terms in the right hand side and nonlinear part. We will use uh, multi index notation. In this case, we can introduce near identity transformation which rewrite system one in the form three. It's almost the same, but here some in the right hand side has a limitation. This limitation is very mm, essential. In particular, if uh, eigenvalues of linear part mm, relation of this eigenvalue is not a rational number, so this sum will be empty. And uh, in this case, we will have a linear system in the normalized equation, for normalized equation. This is very mm, useful for approximations of solutions. This is, mm, it's possible to calculate mm, of the lowest orders of normal form in computer. And uh, there are two conditions, A and omega, which uh, guarantee convergence of this infinite transformation. This is infinite series, really. This is formal series, but if condition A and omega are satisfied, this is a real series, not formal not only formal. Condition omega uh, is for forfeit for almost all mm, uh, genvalues. So, 
condition A ensures convergence, provides the local integrability, and uh, in the if the in the case of pure imaging agent values, uh, it mm, mm, uh, describe it describes periodic all periodic orbits. Uh, let's see Leonard equation. Leonard uh, proved the theorem that if f at x is uh, even function and g odd function that and some additional conditions such equations has a unique stable limit cycle we will not say about even and uh, odd functions and uh, so we will say about leonard like equation because we mm, find integrals not limit cycles this system equivalent to this one if uh, right hand side mm, polynomial let's see uh, 10 mm, volume 10 free parameters a and b first of all we should investigate a linear part of this system linear part matrix of linear part is here is this and uh, mm, all analysis um, works for resonant case so we should uh, put condition of resonance so we should uh, to fix one of the parameters via order of resonance so we can uh, change some parameters for example a zero here via other parameter m where m is uh, the order of resonance after that we mm, can have mm, uh, can the condition a is the algebraic condition we can mm, algebraic condition a is the infinite series of uh, algebraic equations but this is um, but mm, each part of such condition will be necessary condition so let's see all lowest order of this equation it can be rewrite down uh, write down and this is you can see the mouse run away Uh -huh. I caught it here. Here it. У вас что несколько экранов? Вот здесь. А, я не вижу. Все, все, все. Понял. There are many screens with this mouse, so it can migrate from one screen to other. And I should cut, cut here. So this is equation for resonance m equal zero. This is equations for resonance m equal two. And this is for three and so on. But and we have equations. And we said if we found the solutions of this equation, you will have equi cases when uh, system has exact solutions how we can verify these equations there is book Polanin and Zaitsev which collects which collects uh, exact, uh, exact solutions for ordinary uh, differential equation and uh, we uh, choose all examples with polynomial right hand side this is examples 
And uh, we saw cases, I don't know, the I write down only right-hand side of these examples, and uh, I see all these, I look at all these examples, in uh, which has a resonant case. This case has no resonance. Uh, this case has a resonance, and uh, these coefficients satisfy our equations for resonance M2 and the resonance M3. Of course, this is uh, one parameter should be fixed, so this partial cases only. So we briefly went to the all polynomial cases of this book. And uh, we try mm, to integrate by Mathematica 11 these cases. And we add uh, one more, sorry, this is, mm -hmm. this is dot omitted. Uh, this is a new uh, exact soluble mm, case by P Maria Domina. And uh, it's uh, satisfy uh, our algebraic equations also. For which uh, we verified our equations, and now we try to solve these equations. But main problem now, not on the, this is, we have uh, three or four equations, but we have uh, nine, variab nine uh, unknown variables. So we have mm, small mm, numbers of equations. How we can add some additional equation? One of them is a rewrite system in the symmetric in the symmetric form. This is, uh, you can see, this is four zeros in this polynomial. So we can calculate, uh, create our equations for this system. And after that, change d1 to d2, d1 to d4, and uh, you can multiply the numbers of your equations by four. After that, uh, this is uh, the system, algebraic system. This is its solution. After that, you will have um, such values of parameters. And uh, so such system should be integrable. Yes, this is integrable with this integral of motion. This is equation which is integrable. You can compare with Van der Poel equations. Mm. Equations mm -hmm. so probably important to say that this equation is very physically. Lenar equation is very, very important because partial cases of these equations is Van der mm, this is Duffing's equations, all pendulums, and Van der Poel equations. Van der Poel, the equation, this is many, many physical and biological models based on this such system. So this is very interesting, really, investigation of this equation. And uh, first, is how it's possible to calculate integrals of motion. In conclusion, the we represented the uh, system as a dynamical system and parameterized it in a polynomial form. We built the system of algebraic equations is a system parameters uh, whose solutions are those values at which the integrability of the ordinary differential equation may take place. 
We verified this equation by, comp by comparison with the number of known exactly solved cases of the Leonard equations. Some of the cases of known exactly equation system can be found as the solutions of this mm, equation, this algebraic equations. And we have, mm, we found the partial set of parameters at which the equations has the first integral by solving this algebraic equation. So we write down algebraic equations on the parameters. We verify this system of equations and we have had at least one solution here of such system. It's important that we, uh, this method is not uh, limited by uh, dimensions of the system. It can work on the multi, in the high order systems. So we, I know, I hope to use uh, differential consequences of the system for increasing of the dimension of the system and for increasing of number of equations. Thank you. And that's yes. all. Thank you very much for the exposition. Let's thank the speaker. And are there any questions? Comments or remarks, please. Uh, uh, when studying uh, local integrability, uh, let me assume that you have found all uh, corresponding uh, local solutions. Uh, can there arise such situations in mechanics or physics when some of these solutions do not correspond, correspond to any physical or mechanical phenomenon. Then this may uh, mean that this uh, may be a discovery of some new phenomenon or not. You it's have always interpretation. I hope, yes. I hope we can find interesting cases. But just now mm, we have four equations with the nine variables. There are a lot of solutions, you see. This is, we should to extend the numbers of equations. And it's possible, but this is, in the, this is work, this is future. Mm. Yes, so far as I understand the But problem at least we, I have, we uh, have had one example, which uh, system, the uh, generated system, um, has uh, solutions. Nobody solved it before at all. But this is class not investigated. Only Algaba, who write down this equation, um, has one case. He found the condition for um, that this equation is Hamiltonian system. So it's Hamiltonian. This is one um, f one free. No, two-dimensional system, the Hamiltonian is soluble. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your response. Further questions, comments, or remarks, please? Well, I have a more technical question. Is there any computationally efficient way to compute the order of the resonance for a given dynamical system? This is a solution of uh, the equation of second order. And you can, M is three parameters, but it should be um, integer or rational for interesting mm -hmm. cases. Okay, I see. If and you uh, what put about? it three, you will have one. If you put it four, you will have the another. I see. Another. And what about the number of uh, invariant cycles, the limiting cycles? How many are there, those? Uh, invariant cycles or limit cycles? Well, the limit cycles, let's say. Um, limit cycles in principle non-integrable uh, mm. case because there is uh, no conver no conservation of the flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Any other questions or remarks, please? Well, if not, then let's thank the speaker again. And we proceed to the next talk.
that will be given by Professor Sergei Gutnik and his co-author Vasily Sarachev. And Sergei will speak on computer algebra methods for searching the stationary motions of the connected body system moving in a gravitational field. Please. Uh, uh -huh, okay, I want to say some words about Professor Gerd. I was acquainted with him m more than 35 years. He uh, consulted me in some in Grubner basis algorithm and complexity, and he support my Doctor of Science degree. So uh, he was an uh, outstanding scientist. Uh, and now I. Uh, I want to present uh, the talk about computer algebra methods for searching the stationary motion of the connected body system moving in gravitational field. Uh, first, we consider mm, the motion of the two body system around its center of mass in the plane of in the plane uh, of the orbit. Uh, uh, here you can see the scheme. Uh, 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 C is the center of the Earth, and uh, the two bodies, O1 and O2, is the center of each of the body, and this body is connected but as a three-dimensional spherical hinge. And our goal is to to investigate the number the number of equilibria of this of this um, syst or two body system in the uh, in the circle circular orbit uh, so you can see here the p is the uh, is the uh, coordinates of the hinge in our case uh, we uh, we st state that the uh, coordinates a1 and a2 are zero so and uh, we consider the um, equilibria in the plane perpendicular to the circular orbit <laughs> when aircraft angles uh, aircraft angles um, of pitch and yo is zero and we consider only roll angles uh, gamma <coughs> are not zero and the expression of the force function which determines the effect of the earth's gravitational field of the system of the body connected by a spherical hinge. Uh, in the case when uh, two coordinates of the spherical hinge, A1 and A2 are zero, have the form. Uh, here, A, I, B, C are the principal central moments of inertia. M, I is the mass of the each body. And the uh, uh, two coordinates, uh, um, uh, and the uh, body coordinate system, uh, uh, we connected with each body the coordinate body coordinate system uh, O2 and uh, X1, Y and Z2, and uh, uh, we consider <coughs> the motion in the orbital coordinate system. The orbital coordinate system, or in the orbital coordinate system, the axis O Z is directed along the radius vector, and the uh, axis O X directed along the mm, the velocity, the angular velocity of the of the system in motion. <coughs> and uh, here you can see, and omega zero is the angular velocity of the orbital motion of the center of mass of the two body system. And our goal, I want to uh, 
to underline to find uh, the um, equilibrium orientation of this two body uh, system connected by a spherical hinge and first we uh, write the uh, the force function second the expression for the kinetic energy of the system of two bodies uh, have the form um, presented in formula 2 and uh, so we can uh, uh, write the equation of motion uh, in Lagrange form uh, of the second chi by symbolic differentiation of the of the uh, force function and uh, kinetic energy function and uh, it is possible to find uh, this uh, equation of motion the Lagrange equation of motion has the form you can present it in formula 3 and 4 this is uh, different ordinary differential equation of second degree in in uh, param in uh, unknown gamma 1 and uh, angle rho angle gamma 1 and rho angle gamma second mm. uh, to find the mm, equilibri equilibrium orientation equilibrium solution of this uh, Lagrange uh, differential equation we uh, uh, we're assuming gamma 1 and gamma 2 are constant and we obtain the stationary equations uh, you can see here equation two uh, trigonometric equation depending on uh, trigonometric function <coughs> uh, this uh, <coughs> stationary equation uh, uh, allow us to de determine the equilibrium orientation of this uh, uh, two body system connected by a spherical three dimensional spherical hinge in the orbital coordinate system uh, equation uh, form a closed system of two equations with respect to two uh, parameters but we don't know how to solve this trigonometric equation mm, directly and uh, for system five mm, we, uh, we apply uh, the universal universal mm, universal change of sines and cosines through the ten tangent uh, and uh, if we uh, apply this uh, change to equation 5 trigonometric equation 5 you can see that uh, uh, you we obtain two uh, equation 6 uh, with two uh, unknown t1 and t2 uh, tangent of gamma 1 and gamma 2 and uh, we have here uh, eight parameters and to and then our task to to form uh, from this to uh, uh, to have from uh, system six algebraic system uh, to do this we uh, first uh, divide uh, the left hands of the uh, of the first equation divide to the left hence of the second equation and uh, uh, then divide mm, uh, right hand of the sixth equation to the right hand of the second equation and obtain uh, two algebraic and then we multiply uh, correspond correspondingly as, uh, ap uh, multiply the left hand of first equation to the left hand of the second equation and obtain as uh, a system of algebraic equation dependent on tangent one and tangent two and now uh, and we know how to solve algebraic equation of, of two parameters um, uh, here we can see that the coefficients of t uh, this algebraic equation is uh, rather complicated but and uh, now uh, to solve this algebraic system we apply the resultant approach we calculate the uh, symbolically uh, re resultant and uh, you can see here the coefficients of this algebraic equation is rather complicated and uh, we uh, reduce the number of uh, parameters we uh, introduce d1 and d2 and and so uh, finally we have six parameters and, uh, and two unknowns 
If we calculate the resultant of this algebraic equation, we can uh, obtain the, uh, we uh, elim eliminate the um, unknown T1 and obtain algebraic equation depending on one unknown T2. Uh, we, uh, with the help of mathematical matrix function of maple, but I use uh, both and mathematical and maple, and uh, we obtain the um, 12th order algebraic equation depending on six parameters and one unknown. After factorization, this uh, uh, resultant, uh, the determinant of resultant, ha have uh, interesting. Uh, um, uh, after factorization, we have the form of uh, multiplication of three polynomials. The first polynomials are second degree, it's easy to solve, and second also has, have, uh, second also has uh, second degree. It's also possible, possible solve this second equation uh, analytically. And the uh, third, uh, third uh, polynomial uh, has, uh, uh, has uh, eight, eight degree. And uh, the coefficient is rather complicated, about 100 lines. And, uh, so uh, for each set of the system parameters, of uh, six system parameters, we can determine numerically as angles uh, gamma one and gamma, uh, first we calculate the tangent of from gamma one and gamma two, and then find all the equilibrium orientation of the uh, two body satellite stabilizer system. And uh, if we use uh, stabilizer, can uh, apply uh, more equilibria, because if we know equilibria in the, uh, in the circle orbit, it is it's possible to mm, sustain this, this system in, 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 a long, uh, in, in a long position without uh, uh, consume, consume the energy or fuel for this two-body system. Uh, and we can only uh, transfer this two-body system in the, uh, in the equilibrium. And it's in the system uh, sustained in this equilibrium in the uh, circle orbit. Uh, so, but uh, this uh, 10 equation is uh, rather complicated. And uh, next our task, uh, in studying to two-body system, we determine the domains with an equal number of real roots using uh, the uh, calculation, the hypersurface uh, hypersurface of this uh, polynomial, and and uh, it's possible to uh, to the composition of the space of parameters in the domain with an equal number of real roots uh, is determined by the discriminant hypersurface. But the form of the discriminant hypersurface of, of polynomial ten is also very complicated and we mm, calculate when we consider a simple case when uh, all uh, four parameters are equal b1 equal b2 c1 and c2 i mm, want to remember uh, b1 bi and b is the coordinates of the spherical hinge uh, and we consider the special case when the coordinates are equal and in this case uh, the form of the system 10 uh, is more simple, uh, is a simple, and we, uh, f uh, from the equation 10, we obtain a very, uh, very simple um, algebraic equation of 6 degree, where the coefficients, uh, we also introduce two new parameters, d01 and d02, depending on some inertial parameters and mass of each of the body. And you can see here that this equation of six degree, uh, algebraic equation. And uh, for this equation, it's possible to, uh, to calculate the discriminant hypersurface of this polynomial 11. We, uh, we calculate this uh, discriminant uh, hypersurface by, uh, here you can see, uh, of polynomial 11 uh, by calculating the 
a resultant of the two polynomials, P1 and uh, the derivative of P1. Uh, the polynomial, we calculate the resultant of two polynomials of six degree and derivatives as a f f uh, five degree. Uh, 11, uh, we calculate the, mm, de 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 the determinant of uh, 11 degree matrix. And uh, when I calculated this um, uh, equation for, for hypersurface, I obtained uh, some, uh, some thousand lines in Mathematica. But, um, but after factorization, I obtained some uh, maybe dozens of lines from thousand. Uh, and it's very interesting, you can see after factorization, we obtain from this, we obtain the hypersurface containing uh, 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 four polynomials. And then we, uh, of polynomials of 12th and 6th degree, depending only on parameters, on system parameters. In the space of two parameters, d01 and d02, we can calculate the, mm, in the plane, uh, in the plane we can calculate the domains with equal number of equilibrium solution. And now we should check the change of the number of equilibria when the curve uh, 12 uh, is intersected, curve 12. Uh, this can be done numerically by determining the number of equilibria at a single point of each domain of this plane. And uh, the number of uh, equilibria are uh, constant, uh, equal in, in, this, in, in, in this region. Only and we, after investigation, we uh, uh, define that only one curve of from these four uh, polynomials uh, separates the domains with different number of equilibria. And the next uh, slide uh, will show, uh, show us the distribution of domains with equal number of, uh, of real roots. And the first, uh, the first talk today from our Japanese colleague, they also investigate in, ro in robotics, they uh, investigate the number of real roots or in, in robotics uh, problem. And here in the space problem, we also investigate the number of real roots of the polynomial system using the uh, resultant con co concept. And uh, therefore, you can see here a very interesting um, uh, figure. Uh, here we can see the regions with the fixed number of equilibria in the plane. In the center of this uh, figure, we have 12 equilibria, and then you can see the change of the number of equilibria in the each region. So the hyper, uh, hyper plane uh, divide this, uh, this, this, uh, or these lines, or divide this plane in the regions with uh, constant or fixed number of equilibrium orientation. So, and finally, we, mm, we uh, our, our conclusion: we have obtained an all equilibrium orientation of satellite stabilizer system in the plane perpendicular to the circular orbit. Uh, with uh, only with roll angle in the orbital reference frame using computer algebra methods based on resultant calculation. And the condition of, for existence of this equilibria were obtained and the, uh, an analysis of uh, evolution of domains of existence of equilibrium orientation in the, in the plane of system parameters for the special case when the coordinates of the hinge or in the satellite uh, are equal. Uh, are, uh, have made using discriminant hypersurface approach. And to find equilibrium orientation, the computer algebra method were used. Uh, references, uh, we also uh, we investigate. In previous our work, we used uh, Grubner basis approach, but here it was possible to use only uh, um, the resultant approach. So thank you for your attention. I, in time. <laughs> my, my Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> questions, comments, or remarks, please. I have two questions. Okay. Uh, when you have updated your main uh, system of uh, nonlinear algebraic equations, uh, nonlinear. Uh, 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 then you have used uh, the resultant and so on. Uh -huh. 
uh, have you maybe tried to use the technique of Grobner basis for uh, solving this system? But uh, here we can uh, have two uh, two poly uh, algebraic systems. Both photoalgebraic algebraic system is sufficient to use resultant. But maybe the Grobner basis would I give you a more transparent solution, which would be easier to analyze. No, I think that n no, uh, because uh, mm, as also mentioned in in the first uh, report in our in from Tsukuba, uh, if we use Grobner basis, we, we have uh, uh, many parameters here, six parameters, mm -hmm. and we if we use uh, comprehensive Grobner basis, and comprehensive Grobner basis is very mm, the the complexity is very depending on the number of parameters. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, the resulting polynomials, some polynomials in, gro in Grobner basis, may be reducible. Uh, and this is very good then. Maybe later I, I see it. But uh, this, uh, for thi this approach is more, more, more transparent for, for me. And <laughs> my, my second question is as follows. Uh, when one finds uh, a solution of, of a polynomial mm -hmm. system, the correctness is verified by a, sim uh, by a simple substitution of mm -hmm. the solution into That's the equations. But I may suppose in your case uh, th this would be impossible. Uh, have you tried to no, do no, that? No, it's possible to, to, uh, to substitute the final uh, <coughs> results to the initial system and we can prove that it's uh, correct. Yes, uh, the my, my main question about the correctness of your in, uh, obtained solution. Yes, it's uh, correctness is good. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very uh, well-known algorithm. I use well-known algorithm is a stable algorithm. Uh, stable. Stable, yes. You have found certain uh, domains uh -huh. for... Uh, yes, so, uh, this uh, al algebraically stable um, mm -hmm. algorithm. Mm -hmm. Okay. More questions, please. Uh, my question is uh, <laughs> as follows. Um, uh, if you consider um, uh, al algebraic uh, system of algebraic um, uh, equations and uh, um, uh, uh, try to know about uh, uh, real roots mm -hmm. in uh, 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 some region, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a uh, most complicated problem is uh, not uh, uh, to compute uh, discriminant, uh, but uh, to compute um, uh, all of regions all the partis uh, par partition of partition the of this of parameters mm -hmm. uh, into the regions with uh, uh, different we, we uh, number of uh, real roots. Different it's number of real roots. Uh, yeah, yes, uh -huh, yes. Because, uh, in first uh, Jap uh, Japanese doctorate, uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, was the same problem, but yes. uh, it considered uh, uh, the only uh, estimating of real roots in concrete uh, uh, number of parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you uh, uh, want to consider all uh, space of parameters and uh, to compute uh, all, all the partition, it's very, very complicated Yes, I uh, agree with uh, you. Maybe you uh, uh, solve it in uh, for uh, the, uh, the parameters uh, uh, consider it in your uh, questions uh, for uh, six degree and uh, two parameters. And uh, but uh, but uh, you can see here we, uh, we reduce from six parameters to, to two, and only uh. in two parameters we can so uh, find. But uh, in in general case for six parameters, it's very very complicated to do it. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, I I know uh, very uh, no, not not very complicated uh, problems uh, in which. Uh, uh, we doesn't know uh, even the number of uh, of uh, real regions, roots. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, uh, not not real roots, but, but the, the regions. Number of, uh, mm -hmm. number of regions. Yes, uh, of uh, separation. Uh, yes. And, uh, uh, yes, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, for example, in su uh, such kind of problems, it is very important problem to find uh, maximal uh, mm -hmm. number of real roots, and uh, 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 at least uh, for uh, uh, some. 
uh, problems uh, which I know from uh, celestial mechanics, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the answer is uh, not, not now. Uh, it's open. Yes. <laughs> the answer is open. Yes. yes, I agree yes. with you. Thank you. <coughs> but uh, in One partial cases, it's okay. <laughs> One final question, please. Uh, when you switch to resultant, uh, mm -hmm. you can get some extra solutions that are not the solutions of the initial system. Is this the case? And how do you deal with uh, uh, extra solution? We can uh, uh, then also um, uh, we we can uh, uh, extra solution. We can uh, uh, use uh, initial system and to separate this extra solution from from. Mm -hmm. And you can check it. That's a lovely discussion, but we have to move on. So let's thank the speaker again, please. And we can proceed thank with the discussion you. after other talks. And the next presentation this morning is going to be by Vladimir Korniak of uh, the Joint uh, Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna. And Vladimir is going to speak about tensor decompositions of quantum systems in finite quantum mechanics. Ну понятно, хорошо. The study of uh, interrelations between uh, parts uh, of the whole and uh, part to parts uh, and part uh, and uh, whole uh, are uh, called sometimes merology. A quantum merology is characterized by the uh, whole uh, is isolated quantum system. Uh, ah, what? Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, whole is a uh, uh, isolated quantum system. In fact, uh, isolated quantum system can be only one. It's a whole universe. Uh, or the isolated quantum system can be considered as such uh, only approximately. Uh, the, the typical uh, problems is how to uh, select the uh, interesting part within the whole. Usually, it's an observ observable system, uh, observer, uh, uh, environment, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, al also, there are such uh, things as uh, uh, construction of a geometric, uh, 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 of geometric space uh, as uh, em emergent. <laughs> As emergent en entity and also in such a way uh, can be constructed uh, uh, time. Uh, one of, of the known attempts in this direction is so-called page Wouters mechanism. Uh, we uh, develop uh, uh, a number of uh, computer programs to study the following. Uh, decomposition, uh, methods of decomposition of the whole quantum system into parts. Of course, uh, decomposition uh, into parts of the whole is uh, a bit uh, subject subjective uh, uh, thing. Uh, the investigating of uh, different quantity characteristic uh, uh, of separability. Most known of them are uh, interaction uh, energy, the, uh, the interaction energies of course respect locality 
and there are also non-local correlations, quantum correlations. They uh, are described usually in terms of uh, mutual information. Uh, this, uh, we see some uh, resemblance in uh, both this uh, in both these uh, things, uh, but of course uh, they are quite different. And uh, uh, of course, it is interesting to uh, construct uh, models to uh, investigate the mergers of geometry in large Gilbert space. First of all, about some notations we, we use for Gilbert spaces. Uh, I call uh, uh, the Gilbert space of the whole uh, called the global Hilbert space, and uh, Hilbert spaces uh, uh, for uh, subsystems will be called uh, local Hilbert spaces. Of course, uh, dimensions of uh, uh, the dimension of the global Hilbert space is uh, product of uh, dimensions of uh, uh, local Hilbert spaces. For any Hilbert uh, space of dimension D, I use uh, the following uh, the following notation. It's a so-called uh, Dirac notation for its basis uh, element and orthonormal basis uh, looks li like this: zero, this uh, element, one for for this, and so on. If we have uh, a set of uh, uh, Hilbert spaces, then we can ca construct tensor product of uh, H Hilbert spaces. Uh, the, or the orthonormal basis of uh, in the uh, uh, global Hilbert space uh, is uh, uh, formed by uh, all possible uh, monomials of such uh, uh, such form and uh, its index of uh, this uh, corresponding uh, basis elements is uh, uh, in terms of lo uh, log indices of local Gilbert space can be expressed by this formula this uh, uh, relation is one to one uh, relation that is if we have uh, some uh, uh, basis elements is a uh, global Gilbert space. We can construct, uh, uh, decompose it uh, in, into, uh, uh, we, we know f uh, of which uh, 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 local uh, basis elements it con consists. You, uh, using a sequence of uh, uh, remainders of division by local uh, dimensions. Th that is we have one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, we can uh, consider uh, opposite problem. Uh, 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 that is, we have some uh, large Hilbert space and uh, know that its uh, uh, dimension is decomposed into uh, uh, set of uh, natural numbers, uh, local dimensions. Then we can construct. Uh, then we can construct uh, decomposition of uh, uh, global Gilbert space into uh, into tensor product of uh, local G Gilbert spaces, and uh, we should take into account that we have <coughs> here some uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, each uh, uh, orthonormal basis can be uh, turned in other, each other orthonormal basis using some unitary transformation. Uh, applying all possible transformation and using some uh, properties of tensor product, we obtain that uh, we uh, th the only essential uh, unitary transformation is a trans unitary transformation in global Gilbert space. 
And uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, conclude that to factorize uh, Gilbert space into uh, components, into the tensor uh, product, we need uh, two, two things. Uh, decomposition of uh, integer number and uh, uh, some uh, unitary transformation. Uh, physicists uh, 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 use uh, uh, other approaches to this problem and they wrote me uh, about uh, uh, no, but, but I did not go into detail. Now, uh, if we have uh, decomposition of Hilbert space, uh, we can decompose uh, pure quantum state uh, in this uh, global Hilbert space into uh, uh, it is a reasonable assum assumption that the uh, uh, state of uh, uh, isolated quantum system should be Pure. Uh, there, are, uh, we, we, there are very strong uh, arguments uh, to this, but I will not go into the detail. That we have pure state, and we can decompose it uh, into uh, uh, states in uh, in uh, uh, local spaces. This is. Uh, uh, usually uh, done the following. We construct density matrix of pure state. This is, uh, for pure state, uh, density matrix is one, uh, one rank projector of such form. And uh, then we uh, apply uh, taking uh, uh, traces with respect to uh, if we, we, if we can, uh, if we wish uh, to describe uh, behavior of uh, some subsystem, we should uh, 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 take uh, uh, complement to this subsystem and uh, constru construct trace uh, with respect to this complement. Uh, the so ob obvious computational procedure. Uh, we, we, we should run along all possible uh, multi-indices for uh, complement and uh, add multi-indices uh, of uh, interest in for, for interest in a, uh, uh, element of a reduced matrix, uh, density, uh, density, density matrix, and uh, Construct uh, and the uh, sum over this uh, it's, no, it's, uh, 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 procedure is rather complicated uh, in details, but uh, in general, it's a very simple procedure. Uh, now uh, we uh, to uh, do for, for, for the uh, computations, we need some model of quantum mechanics. Uh, uh, David Hilbert uh, uh, wrote in his talk on the infinity, uh, our principal result is that the in infinite is nowhere to be found in reality. It neither exists in nature, nor uh, provides a legitimate basis for rational uh, thought, a remarkable harmony between uh, being uh, and uh, thought. Uh, so uh, using uh, his uh, st statement as direction, we should remove uh, infinities as, uh, from quantum mechanics. <coughs> so, uh, I uh, done as follow, uh, did as follows. Uh, I uh, replaced uh, unitary group by finite group uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the following reason. Finite groups are far superior to Lie groups as a tool to describe in reality. As uh, uh, Lee, any Lie group can be 
uh, have analogs uh, among uh, many, uh, infinitely many analogs among finite groups, but not vice versa. Uh, when uh, physics uh, is an uh, empirical science, uh, we can always uh, replace any Lie group with an empirical equivalent finite group. Uh, any linear, uh, linear representation of finite group is unitary. We have autom unitarity automatically, and uh, uh, any sub-representation of uh, any uh, linear representation of finite group is a sub-representation for some permutation representation. So we can uh, construct uh, formalism of quantum mechanics entirely uh, uh, using only permutation on some uh, finite set. Uh, I did such modification. I did some such modifications. And uh, recently, this modification was analyzed uh, by uh, the theoretical physicist. He is. Uh, uh, Tom Bent, uh, he is uh, uh, one, of the, uh, the one of the leading uh, uh, string theorists. And uh, he concluded uh, that uh, that uh, such approach can probably be a, a model for of the world uh, we observe. He also mentioned that uh, uh, this approach. Uh, he also mentioned that this approach uh, connection somehow uh, is connected somehow with uh, Hoff's uh, uh, on uh, ontological quantum mechanics, uh, and I I borrowed uh, uh, Hoff's uh, in in, in phase. Uh, talk I will use term ONTIC. ONTIC is an uh, abbreviation uh, used by uh, Tchuft uh, by, by Tchuft uh, for ontological. доклад, я из него зашел в этот в другой файл, теперь мне надо выйти из этого файла и, этот, и пойти оказаться в своем докладе. Ну, мне надо было на том же месте. Как-то странно, это у меня легко получалось на других. Ну ладно, я буду листать тогда. Черт, раз не работает, придется листать. Оно не листается. Что такое? Надо было делать как ты. Ну, и так должно было быть, а он здесь не сработал. А? Ну. Это не тот, куда? Нет. 
Ну, одно, хотя бы, если бы можно было листать, то за счет потери времени это можно было бы все слепировать. Только этим, а, а мы еще нельзя, да? Уже мышью перестала листать. А? не устраивать, я же мышью хотел показывать это, ну, как указать и пользоваться, как указка. Это как указка, а листать. Ну вот, она теперь бы стала листать. Да. Так. Что, let's formulate some elements of this modification of quantum mechanics. We have some set of final set of elements which we call quantic elements. We have symmetry group acting on this set. Most natural is how symmetric group, that's the group of all permutations of uh, this element. And the uh, arithmetic uh, is needed uh, to, uh, computa to uh, computation in quantum theory. The arithmetic is built from uh, uh, two uh, primitive things. Natural numbers, they, it, uh, this is the abstraction of uh, counting, and the uh, uh, roots of unity the abstraction of periodicity. Uh, for uh, any group, it is sufficient to use uh, uh, roots of L, uh, roots of unity, where, where L is, uh, is uh, exponent of the group, that is least common multiple of all elements of the group. Uh, such uh, uh, this is sufficient to uh, obtain all possible computation in quantum mechanics, not only in some uh, 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 the, the group as a whole, but in, in, in uh, any subgroup of the group that uh, we uh, cover all, all uh, needs of quantum mechanics. Uh, with such, uh, uh, we, uh, in fact, we obtain uh, extension by uh, such algebraic extension of uh, uh, rational. Uh, first of all, we construct uh, from uh, semi-ring n natural number. Uh, we can add in uh, root of unity. We uh, construct ring, then uh, taking fraction field of this uh, ring, we, uh, we can, came to, we come to, to the uh, extension of uh, rational by uh, root of unity. And uh, and uh, we have permutation representation in, in this Hilbert space. Uh, the f uh, is described by the following uh, formula. Uh, any uh, permutation representation uh, uh, of, of any group decomposes in two uh, subspaces, trivial uh, su subspace, uh, one-dimensional trivial subspace, uh, that, uh, and the uh, complement to it, uh, so-called uh, standard. Uh, space. In the case of uh, symmetric group, uh, the standard uh, 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 sub-representation is reducible. Uh, and, uh, uh, Benz uh, mentioned the fo uh, emphasized the following. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, namely, uh, 
quantum mechanics manifest itself precisely in this standard space uh, and uh, it can encompass uh, final dimensional approximation to all known models of theoretical physics. And uh, uh, he uh, gave the following estimation that is uh, number of uh, finite fundamental uh, uh, Planck elements uh, uh, is uh, double exponential for uh, of, of uh, 20 or for one cubic centimeter of matter and uh, 123 for entire un universe. That is a very large uh, number. And uh, uh, he also mentioned that uh, 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 that uh, symm symmetric group acting on n elements uh, and uh, uh, unitary group in n minus one dimensions uh, are connected as, uh, by, by this uh, theorem stating that uh, for n sufficiently large, uh, any general the most general uh, finite subgroup uh, of uh, uh, unitary group is a semi-direct pro pro product of some abelian group and uh, uh, symmetric group in n, uh, on n elements. But it's, it's not very important because I, I think that finite group mo are mo most fundamental than unitary, so this reduction is uh, not, not very essential. Uh, further, we construct projections in natural uh, uh, vectors and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, prove that any state in standard space, any, any quantum state in standard space can be obtained from uh, uh, vectors in uh, uh, with uh, natural coordinates, that is uh, from uh, integer points of uh, uh, non-negative uh, 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 non-negative orthant in uh, uh, n-dimensional uh, 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 Hilbert space. Most attractive uh, for, for both ontological and computational reasons uh, are we, of course, we should select some finite, uh, 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 finite uh, 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 subset in, in among all the such elements and uh, we select uh, on, uh, what we call ontology uh, what we call uh, uh, we select uh, simplest case when uh, our coordinates are only one and, and uh, zero. Uh, in this case, we, uh, we, we will call ontic vectors, uh, uh, such, uh, such natural vectors, they are uh, bit strings for, or equivalently, uh, it, this is a partition of ontic sets into uh, two non-trivial subsets. And uh, taking a complement in the, uh, in the ontic uh, Hilbert space uh, in ontic on set uh, uh, induces uh, changing of sign uh, in state in, uh, in uh, uh, standard space. We can obtain uh, some symmetries and so, so on. Can, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, scalar product in standard space uh, in terms of uh, uh, this uh, ontic vectors. And uh, uh, no, so uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, compact and uh, easily to uh, investigation model of quantum mechanics, which is uh, quite uh, uh, quite well described uh, uh, physics. Uh, uh, since I have no uh, time, 
uh, most important uh, uh, ontic basis, that is basis in uh, whole Gilbert space, and uh, uh, so-called energy basis. Uh, energy basis I call uh, basis in which uh, unitary operator of evolution of the uh, whole system uh, is decomposed, uh, is reduced, is di diagonalized, uh, and uh, they are important due, due to many uh, reasons, many important reasons, and uh, allow to obtain uh, many uh, 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 many things we can compute using this model. Uh, we use uh, as entanglement measure. We uh, use instead of uh, uh, instead of von Neumann entropy, uh, we, uh, re, we use second Renyi entropy. By uh, also by many uh, uh, fundamental reasons. This is some illustration of computation, but I have no time. So uh, uh, th that's all. Thank you. Okay. Much. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. Maybe we have time for one short question, since we don't have that much time at all. Yes. Please. Okay. 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 Uh, I do understand my question is going to be a little bit abstract. However, nevertheless, it's very important. You did mention a few times the word ontological. However, everything you said here uh, concerned with the epistemological question of neurology. I mean, uh, is there anything really in the work about the ontology? Because there is a certain difference. If you have the epistemological question, this means you have a priori knowledge that the system has constituents and you consider the relation of the whole to the part. And the uh, ontological question presumes that uh, you are going to answer the question uh, whether a certain system does have constituents. In quantum mechanics, as far as I understand, we do think that we have to have the upper uh, knowledge. Ладно, смотрите, вы несколько раз упомянули слово онтологический вопрос, да? Но все, что вы тут рассматриваете, это эпистемологический вопрос. Почему? Потому что вы предполагаете, что система имеет некоторые составляющие, и вы рассматриваете, как оба соотношения целого к частному, да, к малому. С другой стороны, очень важный вопрос, на который необходимо ответить, в принципе, и на которого еще ответа нету. Можно ли математически корректно сформулировать вопрос и ответить на него, естественно, состоит ли система из частей, из подсистем, да. Потому что в квантовой механике мы считаем, что это априорное знание что система состоит из частей. Если нет этого априорного знания, то у нас есть некая большая система, которую мы просто тензорно разлагаем. Да? Мы можем по-разному при том разлагать, и тогда возникает вопрос оптимального разложения. Так я об этом... Maybe I missed all the point. All my talk was about this, how to optimize... Maybe I missed... No, no, нет, вот смотрите, у вас есть, скажем, система 16 на 16. Это система 2 на 8 или 4 на 4? А, Вот видите, это, это уже онтологический вопрос, на который необходимо ответить. А если вы знаете... Предположим, у меня задано, я единственное, что знаю, что у меня есть 16-уровневая система. Могу ли я, исходя из некоторых постулатов или из некоторого подхода, выяснить, это система 16 на 16, изолированная система 16 на 16 просто, это система 2 на 8, это система 4 на 4. Существует ли ответ? Вот, это, вот таким образом сформулированный ну, вопрос. Это онтологический вопрос уже в мировой. Я, я знаю, что it's obviously that uh, any decomposition uh, can be taken, of course. But uh, uh, practice uh, shows that uh, the smaller decomposition, the, the in more interesting results of such decomposition. It, it seems that uh, uh, more uh, larger decompositions uh, 
uh, can be somehow described as uh, in terms of a smaller decomposition. Uh, that's again an epistemological uh, approach. You say that this is interesting, we are going to consider that. But you have to have uh, this appro uh, approach that I'm going to take only the interesting parts, not the reality, not the ontology of the system. Okay, thank but you. Uh, thank you anyways. Uh, any, any decomposition is subjective, any decomposition. Because yeah, we can consider, uh, treat, uh, uh, decompose uh, such system uh, into subsystems uh, as uh, it is interesting for you, but for him, uh, maybe another decomposition is more interesting. There is a, it's, uh, it's so the part not, is, not, uh, so a, the part, the sub-part, the... It's out of uh, science. It's a so the constituent of, of the system is not something objective, uh, but... Yes, uh, you, you, can, okay. you can decompose as, uh, as, as uh, you want, but uh, if you obtain interesting results with your decomposition, you, f you want. So uh, the uh, atom does not consist of electron and nucleus. This is your just approach. Yes, yes. It's a, uh, yes, it's a Okay, thank you. No, that's mm -hmm. very important. There is an ontological question, and there is no, uh, it's very hard problem. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks a lot. So I'm afraid we don't have any time for any further questions. So let's thank the speaker again. And of course, there, there are deep philosophical questions behind quantum mechanics. So we have just one final talk of this afternoon, of this uh, morning session. And it is going to be presented by a group of authors, by Algirdas Devekis, Alexander Gusev, the speaker, uh, Sergei Vilnitsky, who unfortunately could not come, could not come here, uh, Andrzej Godz, Alexander Dvedrak, uh, Gestmer Burdik, and George Pagasan. And the title of the talk is Symbolic Numeric Algorithms for Computing Orthonormal Basis of SU3 Group for Orbital Angular Momentum. Please. This, the studied problem is calculate of orthogonal basis for reducible representation of the different non-canonical group and algorithm to resolve missing la label problem. This, is, this problem is a, part, is a part of the problem of calculate her some characteristic of nuclear nuclear models so from in main part to use uh, some different point symmetries to calculate some model the, the main problem in calculate basis called the missing label problem consistence follow instead of group uh, SO3 where the two, gen two generators and correspond uh, quantum numbers calculate uh, cal defined by easiest is nowhere Ellis orbital momentum by M is projection. In the group S U3, which is group of five dimensional sphere, we may use the easy by easiest way say five or four different numbers is lambda mu L and N. So for fifth quant quantum number x, calculate by the not tri trivial way. So it may be not integer, but, but solution of some eigenvalue problems for operator SO3. The sum basis for this case are known. It is Barman-Mashinsky, non, 
no no that the gondol with the Elliot basis and canonical orthogonal Gelfand thin statement basis. So this problem is con continuation of our work with Vladimir Petrovich Gert, which is in with his participation we calculate the the orthogonal Barman Mashinsky basis. So the main part of talk I will sp speak about this basis. So but in the uh, proceedings more attention are, are given for Elliot or and Gelfen Zeitlin basis. So the collective nuclear model, we have some Gamiltonian one, which is for the laboratory and intrinsic group SO3. So the Gamiltonian given by formula one, where QEL are gen generators of SO3 basis of laboratory frame and QEL with bars um generators the in the same base but in intrinsic one. So the com commutation relation are presented in the bound of the of the slide. So we have that laboratory and uh, intrinsic parameters are commute with them. For our fees physical interest, the interaction Gamiltonian, Gamiltonian H uh, is uh, calculated in different three form for, by formula from two to fourth, which correspond to study tetrader or octa octader symmetric nucleus. So for calculation energy needs to solve the boundary problem one. Using the no, Barman Mashinsky or Elliot or Gelfan Zeitlin basis we can, can solve the al algebraic eigenvalue problem five, where the basis functions are given, uh, where the solution are given in composition of basis function with unknown coefficient c. So for solve this problem, it is better to construct the Arthur, Arthur normal basis six seven and matrix A in formula S have the triangle form. So this uh, first we applied for Barman Mashinsky basis that calculate by known way with some in the form of nine where five operators a construct via creation and annihilation operator where the degrees in formula nine a quantum a quantum numbers so the standard quant relation with other quantum numbers in Barman Mashinsky basis is given by formula 10. So the operators are determined via the creation and annihilation by formulas 11 and 12. So that satisfied by star relations 13 and the standard oscillator basis are given by formula 
14 and 15. So we apply this uh, five operators and we may calculate by basis by the different way, wave wave tag and one of them using the only overlap of integrals which is given by this formula. But this this formula the situation of the formula sixteen is unpleasant because we have the some some numbers of terms which is similar by absolute value by different by this C sign which is given my by minus one in some some degrees so we may to apply this chain sign sign changed terms to group of them but it goes to the hot formula so we the exit it is extent of precision. So, but in the next mm. computation, we use mm, three precision of 300 degree for large quantum number given a raw computation. So, to use the uh, or normalized basis we apply the standard gram schmidt procedures which is triangle matrix the example are given of this matrix are given by formula 20 so the matrix of x3 correspond to missing variables are calculated by standard weight in and for the barman machinsky basis it present by formulas 21-22 so this is example the matrix A for lambda is and L is approximately 120. We may calculate by exact or numerical. Here is with precision 300. The numerical time for the uh, is less in many many times for the numerical calculation. So the com the times for calculation the matrix x3 by different way with the non artoman arto normalized basis is given by upper line in the in the plot the middle line is calculation you with or the normalization procedure which and direct summation formula is alg algorithm uh, is algorithm three so it is interesting but we use some norm or the normalization we see that times is less it's it's the answer is the sum may some term can cancel this so this part of the our talk we, we study with 
Владимир Петрович. And so we after him in, in this year we some calculation is Elliot basis for for this case the three types of formula which one of which in calculation of papers of Asherova and Tol Tolstoy we you which contain the same term of with summation with sign change uh, sign changing coefficients so this this formula contains hypergeometric function f32 but other formula uh, formulas contains hypergeometric function f21 and one of formula not contains any hypergeometric function but contain only fac factorials in this calculation so but this так, так, this this formula gives the fastest calculation so it is its present is in the table and in the picture. So the next basis is Gel Gelfan Zeitlin basis, the generators of given by up uh, formula. So the components of angular momentum operator and quadrupole momentum are defined by low block. So the commutation relation at four. So operator x x three given by the log by the knoll way. It's on this picture is present some basis which is calculated by si similar ways. So some results of the matrix x3 in the Gelfand center, Gelfand center patterns. So in the column 6 at L is 6, the eigen solution is marked by magenta color. So this values is the similar to the calculated by b in the Barman Machinsky case. So how to dimension dimension value uh, of the matrix X three has depends of the no quantum numbers mu. So it's presented here, but maximum because matrix mm, x3 is block diagon block diagonal, so max dimension of the blocks is presented by fourth column in the table. So this presented some some results. This is the Hamiltonian. Exa this example of spectrum, but it's known for the some small numbers it may be calculated by the exact way, but at large by the enemy. So it is the the dimension of the fiber. Oh. He is the eigenvalue Casimir operator and the last call with the multiplicity degeneracy. So the solu this some um, solution of the algebraic problem is presented by this slide. So in the parentheses the dimension I show. This this is the other model.
for the calculate the quadrotol quadrupole nuclear modules with octahedral symmetry. So we use the finite element method. Some the themed of the finite elements method we uh, do with the Vladimir Petrovich and publication uh, publicated in the CASC series of the conference in, chi in China. 18 stack. So this is so this the boundary value problem for the set of the um, dif differential equation with partial derivatives with the Dirichlet and Neyman ba boundary conditions. So the potential I give the, this series numbered by 46 and presented of the above graphics. So it is values for the Uran 236. This is not our result. This result given by Profe Professor Guess. But our problem with to you to apply this technical technical and study the new nuclear model. So I conclude this talk by resume. We, we present symbolic numerical algorithm and realize in Wolfram Mathematica for compute the orthogonal Barman machines, Kilion and Gelfan Seitlin basis of irreduction irredu representation of a set three. So we apply we resolve the missing label problem, apply the algorithm for construction for construction Barman machines and Elliot orthogonal basis by modifi modified Gram Schmidt procedure pr procedure and it's a given to perform large scale calculation for large quantum numbers. Up is application to calculate the general spectrum of quadruple models with point sy symmetry and the perspective of reduction and solve the multi-dimension boundary value problems to the algebraic value by means the high od order accuracy multivariate finite element method we, we, which we elaborate in our team with participation of Professor Vladimir Petrovich Gert has been discussed. Thank you for attention. Yes, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Questions and comments, please. So I have a question. Uh, could you please comment a bit the, about the hardware, the hardware that you have, have been using for the, uh, your, your finite element method computation? So we, in our implementation, use the standard personal computers, but it, if it is needed, we may apply to computer Gibralit in the laboratory, uh, laboratory inf information tech technology of the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. Okay. But it, it is problem being, will be very Okay, any further questions or comments, please? Well, if not, let's thank the speaker again.
And so we conclude our morning session. Now we have lunch, which is going to be in the same building, well, probably downstairs, we'll double check that, and resume um, our talks at half past two. Thank you very much.
Kuhn. So we resume our work, and it is time for our afternoon session, which will be chaired by Professor Sergei Gutnik. But I only have a short announcement, a really short announcement, and that's about the remote participants and using the microphones. So unfortunately, we had to turn off the microphones because there was some noise and the echo during the morning session. Uh, yet, right now, the microphones are on, or at least they can be turned on by anyone who, wish to, who wants to do so, but please keep it off, keep the microphones off, unless you want to ask a question, because otherwise uh, there is some additional noise coming and it makes it difficult for the um, in-person participants. Thank you very much. Uh, Dear colleagues from Poland, Sultanat Bijanova, are you here? Sultanat, are you here? Sultanat. Sultanat Bijanova is a speaker, as far as I understand. Uh -huh. uh, no, no. Uh -huh. No, no sound, sound. Звук есть? The next uh, speak uh, is Alexander Prokopenia, Muhtar Minglibayev, and Sultanat Bijanova. Minglibayev, yes, Minglibayev. Who will be speaker as uh, Sultanat? Uh. No. No sound. Sultanat, uh, can you... Uh, no, no, uh, but if you have no camera, but please uh, switch on your sound, microphone. Microphone is switched off, as, as I see. Please uh, switch on microphone. Okay. Пожалуйста, включите микрофон. Sultanat. Выключен. No, please. А, ah, участники. Can you, uh, can you show us the list of participants? Мы вас не слышим. I will not hear you. А Титаренко будет доклад делать? Она готова? Готова? Let us uh, change uh, uh, our report from Alexander Прокопенья, uh, Мухтар Минглибаев and Салат Бижанова, because we have no we have problem with sound, with microphone. And the next uh, talk will be Tatiana Titarenko. Tatiana is ready. Tatiana. Uh, and Valentina Ertegov. Irkutsk, yes. Tatiana, can you switch? No, no, no. 
случилось, конечно. Они сказали, она, она там, она в, участник, она, она в участниках есть в списке, она уже подключилась. Ну, султанат только. Нету, да, зву это звука? Now we will uh, solve the problem with sound, with microphones. И, и Тать, Татьяна тоже не, нет. Это. Доклады были же утром. Ну, нормально все. Из, из, из Японии, из, из Франции. Please uh, take a minute to solve the problem with microphone. Uh, uh, if we have problem with microphone, maybe we. Huh? Это кто сейчас, Салтанат? Нет, это Титаренко. А, Татьяна, давайте тогда вот вы начнете, потому что у нас была проблема с микрофоном здесь. Тогда просьба расширить экран, share screen, share your screen. Татьяна, we are, we are glad to see you. Please, please start your... Я а Салтанат? Maybe Салтанат? Да, вы меня слышите? А, тогда давайте, Татьяна, все-таки по программе. Давайте да? я начну. Давайте, кто, Салтанат, да? Да, да. Давайте uh -huh. по программе не будем ничего менять. Раз на, мы починили микрофон, ответ, uh -huh. <laughs> solve our problem with microphone, and let us start uh -huh. with... Uh, can you show your uh -huh, presentation? And Alexander Prokopenia, Mukhtar Minglibayev and Sultanat Bijanova. Secular perturbation of translation rotation motion of non-stationary axisymmetric body in the central gravitational field. Please, Sultanat, start uh, your presentation. Dear participants of conference, uh, we present to your attention uh, the report Secular perturbations of translational rotational motion of a non-stationary axiometric body in the central gravitational field. Now, uh, let, uh, let us assume the following conditions. Two body, uh, one of them has a spherical mass distribution. Its mass and uh, radius change uh, with, time, uh, with time, but uh, its dynamic shape is preserved. In other words, the body retains its spherical symmetry uh, all the time. And uh, the second body is assumed to have, uh, to have an arbitrary uh, dynamic structure and, uh, and its principal moment of inertia are different. Besides the size uh, of the second body uh, varies homogeneously and its initial dynamic shape remains Uh, the same, but the size and mass change uh, with time. Such a case uh, takes place, for example, uh, if the body has uh, three mutually, mutually perpendicular planes of the symmetry, then uh, the initial orientation of the uh, principal axis of inertia and uh, location of the center of mass in the axiometric body remain uh, unchanged in the course of, of the evolution. This means that uh, its ellipsoid of inertia, uh, inertia rem uh, remains um, an axiometric one and uh, analogs uh, the initial state of the time. Mass and characterize, uh, mass and characterize Uh, characteristic size of the bodies uh, change at different uh, specific rates. 
we use uh, we use an expansion of the force function uh, of the Newton Newton and interaction uh, accurate up to second zonal uh, harmonics. Now, uh, in the uh, in the figure one, show non-stationary asymmetric body in the relative coordinate system, and uh, in the uh, figure shows uh, in the second figure shows elongated spheroid uh, that is uh, an asymmetric spheroid always remains. Uh, the same as you see, but at the same time, uh, its oblateness and dimensions uh, may change, but all the time it remains axisymmetric. And uh, then these three uh, three mutually uh, symmetric planes, planes remain all the time. Uh, the axis of inertia uh, are directed directed uh, at the intersection of three mutually perpendicular planes along the lines all the time uh, as a re result of which uh, you can see uh, correctly study uh, the translational rotational motion taking into account uh, assumption uh, from one uh, from one till from one to six the equation equations uh, translational rotational motion of the two bodies uh, in relative coordinate system may be written uh, written uh, by equations from three and eight, uh, seven the force function uh, of newton's intersections of two bodies has the form uh, you can see uh, in the formulas four and five uh, the moment inertia of non-stationary asymmetric body uh, given by equations, equations uh, six and uh, alpha, gamma, uh, beta uh, are cosinuses of an ang angles formed uh, by a straight line with central axis of inertia of an non-stationary asymmetric body. And uh, now, uh, next, P, Q, R uh, uh, are the projections of angular uh, velocity of the second body on the axis of its own coordinate system. Accordingly, uh, we can uh, re uh, re rewrite the kinematic uh, Euler equations uh, in formulas eight. Uh, the obtained equations from three and uh, uh, until seven Compl uh, completely characterize the translational rotational motion of the uh, non-stationary asymmetric body in the gravitational field of the spherical body uh, in the relative coordinate system. The problem in this statement is very complicated. Uh, therefore, uh, we will use the methods of perturbation theory to study it. Uh, in the uh, third figure, you can show the Euler angles. Next, uh, equations of motion uh, in Delano Andoyer oscillating elements. Uh, here uh, are the oscillating elements of Delano Andoyer. Uh, note that uh, uh, note that in equation five. Uh, in uh, in the force function five depends on orientation of the second body and so equations uh, equations three, uh, three uh, must be solved together with the equations describing its rotational motion as a general solution of ses, such a system can be found and we apply uh, the perturbation theory uh, to investigation, uh, it is uh, expedient to rewrite equations in the form, in the form uh, nine. In case uh, the right hand, uh, when uh, W uh, equal to zero, equations of motion nine uh, are integrable uh, and their general solution may be written in the terms of Delano variables 
which are uh, related uh, to the analogs of Keplerian orbital elements. Uh, to apply uh, the perturbation theory, uh, it is convenient to rewrite equation uh, of motion nine in the canonical form. First, the formulas uh, 12, 13, uh, respectively uh, the force function. Finally, uh, the formulas uh, 13, our force function is uh, is especially important for rotational motion while we only uh, have gamma, gamma of the three um, direction cosinuses due to axisymmetry. Uh, rotational motion around the center of mass, in, fa uh, in fact, uh, is an analog of, uh, of, uh, of the Euler uh, pointed motion when the body uh, changes uh, size and mass, and the uh, and at the same time uh, the unperturbed motion in asymmetric uh, axisymmetric case is integrated in the Belesko uh, Chernovsko variables uh, as well as in in the Andreyer variables uh, in the uh, in the formulas 15 uh, you can see uh, differential equations. Uh, in the uh, describing the rotational motion. Uh, accordingly, uh, in the formula 16, uh, from 16 uh, until 18, uh, force function of the rotational motion of the axisymmetric body. Next, uh, in the figure four, under air variables, and uh, in the figure four, the following uh, designation are adopted. <clears throat> we rewrite uh, for uh, expression uh, 12 and uh, 13 in the form in the form and uh, analogs, analogously uh, we rewrite uh, expression uh, from 16 uh, till 18 in the form you can see in formulas 20 and uh, where uh, a e uh, are the semi-major axis and uh, the eccentricity of the second body and nu is the true anomaly uh, x, y, z are uh, a Cartesian uh, coordinate, uh, coordinates of the second body uh, with respect to, to the relative coordinate system and, uh, and uh, in the formal, uh, formulas 25, uh, there are uh, the direction coordinates. In the uh, in the uh, twenty uh, twenty four uh, four uh, tau, uh, tau is depends on the uh, analogs of Delena and uh, uh, twenty seven uh, depends uh, of Andreyer elements. Now uh, next evolution equations uh, we average uh, eliminate the resonance. As a result, uh, we have the following uh, averaging. Here, as a result, uh, result uh, the calculation is given uh, for completeness in uh, analogs of a periodic motion in a quasi-conical section as a result of averaging, uh, averaging uh, 31. Moreover, uh, I is uh, Ross uh, uh, Cumbersome value, and uh, I depend uh, and I depends on uh, analogs uh, of translational uh, rotational motion. The uh, equations for uh, secular perturbations now uh, have the form uh, in uh, its formulas uh, 33 and 34. Uh, accordingly, uh, accordingly, it's uh, it's force function. Uh, Thus, uh, computing secular perturbations reduces uh, to the force order system. Uh, system uh, open solving system 
37, we integrate the remaining equation uh, in view uh, of uh, 35, 35 and 36. Uh, system uh, 37 takes the form. Uh, here uh, are the canonical equations, uh, E and reduces mass. Accordingly, uh, E uh, in the equations uh, 30, uh, 41 depends on uh, C and E. Uh, again, these uh, quantities will be constant here. Uh, when the ellipsoid uh, of inertia passes through the sphere uh, is uh, equal to A. Uh, again, the quantities will be constant here. Uh, and then the sign changes. We are very interested, uh, interested in these properties of these uh, equations. From the equations uh, 38, 38, we obtain next uh, expression. Now, uh, next, uh, one can readily check that a general solution of the system, system 40, can be found in the symbolic form uh, for the system parameters and solve equations 40 numerically. To simplify cal calculations, we use the dimensionless variables. Uh, for example, semi modular axis a, a is used as a uh, unit a distance, and uh, time is defined by uh, by the expression. Uh, the Delano Andreyer elements are replaced by the corresponding dimensionless quantities, and uh, dimensionless mass and moments of inertia. Uh, in the next equations, uh, we can rewrite the equations uh, 39, 39 and 40 in the dimensionless variables. Uh, let the loss of variation uh, of the masses are described by Eddington Jean's law. Uh, and uh, there are the dimensions initial conditions. Now, uh, uh, in the uh, in this figure, uh, figure you can sh uh, you can show uh, the change of uh, analog uh, Delano analog uh, ash in the uh, axis x uh, x. Uh, <clears throat> Earth years and uh, in the uh, axis Y ash, uh, there are, uh, there are uh, in the uh, red color constant masses and the uh, uh, blue color uh, variable masses. Uh, in the next figure, uh, inclination and it's, it, uh, it's changing. Uh, using the uh, using the uh, system Mathematica, we obtain uh, numerical solutions of differential equations 44, 44, which are shown in the figure uh, from one until six. Uh, comparison with the case of stationary bodies shows that varying of uh, the masses and sizes of the body, uh, body uh, modify uh, noticeable the evolution of the system. In the present paper, we have considered the classical problem of two non-stationary bodies, uh, uh, bo bo uh, bodies uh, ch uh, changing masses and sizes due to the finite size of the bodies, uh, their rotational motion as well as uh, the intersection between translational and rotational degrees of freedom uh, should be taken uh, into account. Uh, we have obtained the differential equations describing the translational rotational motion of the second body around the first uh, 
uh, one in terms of Delona and Royer variables. Averaging these equations gives the evolutionary equations describing uh, long term behavior of system. Uh, note uh, that in case of uh, equations 31 and 40 describe translational rotational motion of an stationary asymmetric rigid body in the central gravitational field. Non stationary of uh, bodies complicates the problem uh, substantially and solutions to the evolution equations 31, uh, 39 and 40 can be found in symbolic form. These equations were solved numerically for some realistic values of the system parameters. All the relevant symbolic and numerical calculations and visualization of the results are performed uh, by the aid of the computer algebra uh, system, Wolfram system. Mm -hmm. uh, Sultanat, thank you very much for your report. That's all. And you are uh, in time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, please, uh, colleagues, please, questions. Uh, if you, uh, I have two questions, Sultanat. The first question. Uh, is it, uh, is it possible to assume that translational motion of the system not uh, influent on the rotational above center of mass? Is it possible to assume that um, uh, translational motion not depend on uh, rotational motion or not? Yes. It is possible, possible. to assume yes. that uh, uh, translational motion not depend on uh, rotational, yes. Uh, it's it is. Uh, can, you can you repeat? Uh, I, I, uh, the question is: uh, You assume is it possible to assume that uh, 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 translational motion of the system, translational, uh, not depend on rotational motion about its center of mass? Uh, yes, it's possible. Not depend. Not depend. Okay, okay thank mm -hmm. you. And second question, uh, you told that uh, numerical, you apply numerical calculation in Wolfram Mathematica, but what kind of uh, symbolic uh, calculation of Mathematica uh, do you use in your, in your calculations? What kind of symbolic calculation have you done in Mathematica, Wolfram Mathematica? Uh -huh. or, or some integration more with, with polynomial uh, or some uh, average. Uh, average. Uh, you averaging the system. Yes, you you have done symbolically. Yes, averaging. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Please another question. No question. Thank you very much for your good report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, colleagues, the next talk uh, is presented from um, Valentin Erte, Professor Ertegov, and, uh, Tat and Dr. Tatiana Titarenko on the first integrals and, uh, and invariant manifolds in generalized problem of the motion of rigid body in a, a magnetic field. Tatiana, uh, do you, we, are you here? Oh, do you hear me? Please uh, share screen. Uh -huh. uh, I cannot, uh, previous, uh, Please uh, show, show your presentation, uh -huh. Tatiana. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Show your presentation. And uh -huh. we show your face, <laughs> but no presentation. Показать экран. Share screen. Показать свой экран. Я вроде это. А выбрать экран, выбрать экран с презентацией, да? А я, а я сделала все. 
А предыдущий участник, он закрыл или как тут что-то... Сейчас мы проверим. Please check it. Да, раз вы здесь, значит, вы закрыл он. У вас сейчас презентация, на там окно с презентацией на экране? Да. А вот когда вы выбираете... Ага. Выбрать окно, которое показывает. Current window. Текущее окно. Ну, текущее окно выбрать. Да, выбрать. Так, вы, вы ко мне обращаетесь. Я это все сделала. Ну, не показывай что-то. А вот я не понимаю, почему. Горит, да. горит, да? А, вот зелененькая кнопка. Демонстрация экрана. О, на, прекрасно, все видно. Теперь на весь экран. Ага. Окей, Татьяна. Now we, we, okay, we, we see your presentation. Please start. And maybe control L. Yes, control L. Ага. На весь экран да, показать. Ага. От... In this talk, uh, we consider the problem of the rotation of a rigid body with a fixed point under the influence of magnetic field generated by the bonnet London effect as well as potential forces. Uh, this effect is manifested as follows. A rotating neutral ferromagnetic is magnetized along its axis of rotation. A similar phenomenon occurs so when the superconducting body rotates. Uh, the motion of a rigid body with a fixed point taking into account uh, the bonnet London effect uh, and uh, the moment of potential forces is described uh, by the universal equations of the uh, following uh, form. Uh, here, omega is the angular velocity of the body. Gamma is the unit vector of the direction of gravity. S is the center of mass of the body. Uh, this equation uh, admits uh, the two first integrals, and in the general case, are non integrable. Uh, therefore, the problem of finding invariant relations uh, is of interest for the integrability and analysis. Uh, the aim of the present work is to find uh, polynomial invariant relations of equations 1. Then uh, we use uh, the found relations in the qualitative analysis of uh, these equations. At CASC 29, we propose the technique uh, to seek uh, linear invariant relations uh, for, equations, for the equations of uh, type 1. In this work, uh, the same technique is applied uh, for finding polynomial invariant relations of the second degree and uh, higher. Let uh, the matrices A, B, C, equations 1, A, E. Uh, under these conditions uh, for equations 1, uh, we state the problem to find invariant relations of the following uh, form the relations of the second degree. Uh, here, x, y, z, f are constant parameters uh, to be determined. In order to solve this problem, uh, we uh, compute the derivative of the expression f uh, by virtue of equations 1. The computed derivative uh, g is the polynomial of, of these variables. Considering uh, the derivative g, g is uh, the polynomial of one uh, phase variable, uh, for example, omega 1 uh, with uh, coefficients of the rest of the variables, uh, we can represent it as follows. Uh, for this purpose, we use uh, the mathematical function polynomial reduced in the following form. When r is equal to zero identically, f defines the invariant manifolds of equations one. And the integral if 
QR-а и квалифицирал идентифоли. Equating the coefficients of similar terms in R to zero, we have the system of polynomial equations with respect to the variables x, y, z, f, the following form. It is the over-determined system of 73 polynomial algebraic equations. The number of unknowns is 28. This system can be split up into several subsystems with respect to the variables. So in this subsystem, subsystems sequentially with the help of the Gribner basis method, we have we have obtained the following solutions of the above system. The first solution and the second solution. The substitution of the first solution into the expression F produces the following expression, which is the first integral of equations 1 under the following constraints on the parameters of the problem. As one can say, our relation 6 is a linear combination of previously known integrals. The integral of area, the cosine integral, and the new integral. Uh, having substituted uh, the second solution in uh, the expression F, uh, we have uh, the following expression, which is, is also the first integral of uh, equations 1, 1, uh, the following conditions of hold. Uh, the integrals, uh, the following integrals uh, on gamma and omega 2 correspond to the equations of motion for the asymmetric body. Uh, by the same uh, technique, uh, we have uh, found uh, the following integrals under the different conditions of uh, dynamical symmetry of the body. Uh, quadratic integrals. Uh, as to invariant many faults in the problem under consideration, uh, we have uh, degenerate cases. All the equations of the found invariant manifolds are complete uh, squares. One, one of them uh, is uh, written as uh, follows. In fact, uh, equations uh, 7 uh, determines a linear invariant manifold. Uh, we considered, we considered, uh, we also considered uh, the problem uh, uh, of finding uh, the invariant relations of a third and a first degrees uh, for equations one. In this uh, case, uh, the problem uh, is reduced to solving uh, the systems of 160. 350 polynomial algebraic equations with parameters. The number of unknowns uh, is up to 130. Uh, uh, we have, uh, in particular, we have obtained uh, the cubic integral uh, for equations one and uh, the integral of the first degree. Uh, it should be noted that the found integrals uh, uh, omega 3, omega 4 are some combinations of linear and uh, quadratic integrals. Uh, we were able to show this, uh, for example, in the case of the cubic integral. Uh, as to as to invariant manifolds uh, in this problem, uh, we have also obtained uh, degenerate cases. Uh, the equations of the found invariant, uh, manif invariant manifolds uh, have the form of uh, a complete cube or uh, this uh, 
are similar to the following equations. Uh, further, we analyze equations uh, one in the following two cases. When these equations uh, have one of the additional quadratic integrals found above, uh, when uh, these equations have uh, the additional first integral of the first degree. Let us consider the first case. Uh, the equations of motions uh, with an additional quadratic. Uh, let us consider the uh, equations uh, one when uh, the following uh, conditions on the parameters of the problem are uh, hold. Under these conditions, uh, these equations uh, have the following form and admit uh, the first integrals. Here, K1 is uh, the quadratic integrals uh, found above. The integral V3 uh, is uh, directly derived from the equations uh, themselves. For equations 8, uh, this is the problem of finding uh, stationary solutions and invariant manifolds and analyzing the uh, stability. Uh, we find uh, the stationary solutions and invariant manifolds uh, from uh, the necessary extremum conditions of the first integrals uh, of uh, this of uh, equation eight. For this purpose, uh, we take uh, the combination of the first integrals of the problem and uh, write down the necessary extremum conditions uh, for the uh, integral W, W. By using uh, the obtained uh, equations, uh, we uh, find uh, the invariant, first we uh, find uh, the invariant manifolds of uh, maximum dimension, the invariant manifolds of all dimensions, all dimension two. Uh, for this purpose, we construct a lexicographical basis with respect, with respect to the following uh, variables for the polynomials of uh, system 10. As a result, uh, the system is transformed to the following form. Uh, the first two equations uh, determine an invariant manifold of four dimension two of differential equation, equation A. It is verified by uh, invariant manifold definition. Equations uh, are 12, uh, only uh, the last uh, three equations allow one to obtain the first integrals of differential equations on this invariant manifold. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we uh, find uh, uh, stationary solutions of equations A. For this purpose, we have the relation, uh, the following relation uh, to the stationary equations and a construct uh, a lexicographical basis uh, for the polynomials uh, of resulting system with respect to the following uh, variables. As a result, a, a system uh, of equations, uh, we have a system of equations which is decomposed into several subsystems. Uh, two of them are represented uh, here. Uh, equations uh, 14 uh, define uh, the two families of solutions of differential equations A. Uh, from the empirical viewpoint, uh, the solutions are correspond to permanent, permanent uh, rotations of the body. Uh, from equations uh, 13, uh, we find uh, the expression for lambda 2. Uh, uh, substituting uh, this expression into the family of the integrals uh, W, we have uh, the integrals which take a stationary value on the solutions uh, 15. Uh, further, we investigate uh, the stability uh, of uh, the found stationary solutions. Uh, 
Ее заинтегрировал, интегрировал с тильда W, for filling the sufficient conditions. This integrals uh, we uh, consider under the following constraints on uh, the parameter lambda 3. Under these restrictions, uh, the integrals uh, to the W and uh, the solutions uh, under consideration uh, take uh, the following uh, form. Uh, further, we investigate uh, solutions uh, 16. In order to investigate the stability, uh, we uh, introduce uh, the deviations uh, from the amplitude motion. Uh, the second variation of the integrals uh, bar W from the linear manifold uh, defined by the following uh, equations is written as uh, follows. The condition of uh, sign definiteness, uh, the quadratic form of Q1, of Q2, uh, are sufficient uh, for the stability of the solutions under a study. These conditions uh, are written as uh, follows. Uh, the metal electrolytes are consistent uh, under the following constraints of the parameters. Uh, we uh, use uh, the latter conditions uh, to obtain the best sufficient stability conditions uh, closest to necessary ones. For this purpose, uh, we uh, suppose a lambda is equal to these uh, expressions. Then write uh, the necessary external conditions of lambda with uh, respect to lambda 1. Uh, from the latter equations, uh, we find uh, the value of lambda 1. Uh, substituted, uh, substituting this uh, expression in the uh, the quadratic form uh, bar W, uh, we have, uh, no, under this condition, uh, this quadratic form uh, take, uh, takes the following form. The conditions of assigned definiteness of this uh, quadratic form are written, are written as uh, follows. Also, the solutions uh, under consideration are stable when uh, conditions, the weather conditions uh, are satisfied. Uh, further, we uh, compare the above uh, conditions with these necessary ones. Uh, the necessary conditions of uh, stability uh, of the solutions on the study are derived uh, on the base of Latinov's theorem on stability in the linear approximations. The equations of this approximation in the case under consideration uh, in uh, the deviation uh, are written as uh, follows. The characteristic uh, equation uh, of uh, this uh, system uh, has uh, only zero and purely imaginary roots when the following condition, conditions as are satisfied. Comparing uh, the above uh, sufficient stability conditions with uh, the latter conditions, uh, we conclude uh, that uh, conditions uh, 18 uh, are necessary for the stability of the solutions and the study of this position up to the boundary of stability. Uh, uh, finally, uh, the same uh, technique, uh, we applied uh, the same technique uh, uh, for analyzing uh, the equations of motion of the, with the additional integral of the first degree. These equations uh, have the following form, and besides uh, the integral of the first degree, admit uh, the first 
the following with integrals. Uh, for uh, equations at 21, uh, we, said, uh, the pro we also said the problem of finding uh, the stationary solutions and invariant manifolds and invariant manifolds and analyzing their stability. As in the previous case, uh, we uh, compose uh, the linear in order to find invariant manifolds uh, for the above differential equations. Uh, we compose uh, the linear combinations uh, from the first integrals uh, of the problem and write down uh, the necessary experiment conditions of the integral uh, head double U. Uh, having uh, constructed uh, construct the lexical practical basis uh, for the polynomials uh, of system 22 with respect uh, to the following uh, variables, uh, we have uh, found uh, a family of invariant manifolds of of dimension two for differential equations at twenty one. Uh, here lambda two, lambda three are the parameters of uh, this uh, family. Family. Uh, special resolutions in this problem uh, were obtained uh, by solving the inverse problem. Uh, first, we have found uh, constant solutions from differential equations 21, and uh, then we obtained uh, constraints on the parameters lambda under which the solutions uh, satisfy uh, stationary equations 22. Uh, this approach allowed us uh, to obtain uh, both uh, stationary solutions and uh, uh, invariant manifolds uh, which uh, the solutions uh, belong to. The equations uh, of uh, these invariant manifolds are represented here. Uh, these equations uh, determines, determine invariant manifolds of four dimension for all differential equations uh, 21. Uh, using uh, 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 from uh, geometrically, uh, the um, invariant uh, manifold uh, consists of a uh, uh, fixed uh, point of the phase space of uh, system uh, 21. Uh, using uh, the nonlinear combinations of the first integrals uh, of the problem, uh, we uh, investigated uh, the stability uh, of uh, the above uh, invariant manifolds. In particular, using uh, the integral k uh, one we have obtained uh, the sufficient stability uh, condition for invariant manifold uh, 25. Uh, these uh, conditions uh, have uh, the following form. These are some constraints on the problem, on the parameters of the problem, and the constant uh, of uh, the integral v uh, had one written on the invariant manifold uh, under study. No, uh, that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for attention. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you. Colleagues, please, questions. Victor, please. Tatiana, is it possible to check some results numerically? I think it's possible in some results. Uh, to check with uh, mm -hmm. integration, numerical integration, and um, the loss of stability, for example, at some um, various um, parameters. It can be interesting. Book, well, isn't it? Maybe, uh, but uh, as to stability, uh, it can um, verify by uh, geometrically uh, to construct uh, 
действительно констракта сам ну, пикче. А Татьяна, если вы по-русски, вот он э, просто проинтегрировать численно, это как бы возможно исходную систему дифференциальных уравнений и сравнить потом с симульными. Как это? Не, не пробовали? Okay, thank you. You can prove uh, this integral are uh, valid or not, yes? To compare. Uh, mm -hmm. To verify the found uh, integrals. И проверить, является ли эта функция действительно интегралом или хотя бы приближенным интегралом э, в фазовом а, пространстве. Ну, шестимерно у вас, но тем не менее... Окей, Татьяна, thank you very much. Please, uh, more question, no question. Thank you, thank you. We are uh, uh, exact in our schedule. <laughs> next, mm -hmm. next, thank you, Татьяна. Mm -hmm. Next talk uh, will be um, Евгений Ворожцов and Сергей Киселев. Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, the speaker will be Евгений Ворожцов. Mm -hmm. Please, профессор Ворожцов. Optimal four stage uh, symplectic integ integrators for molecular dynamics problem. Mm -hmm. Хорошо. Будьте добры, еще это доклад, это нашел полный экран был. Так, Ворож, Каск. Нет, я уже уводил. Тут. Да, вот этот. И в полный это, экран как-то бы. Первую страницу. О, так, а это на... Так, это назад. А, а почему нет? А на экране нет? Будет, будет. Сейчас а. А, то есть, а, то есть я могу начинать? А, the molecular dynamics is a rapidly developing branch of natural sciences. Its merit lies in that it does not need the knowledge of such properties of solids as their yield strength, viscosity, and equations of state. However, the analytic uh, solution of the molecular dynamics problems is possible only for uh, a few 
simply problems. Therefore, the main tool of theoretical investigation of these problems is based on using the numerical methods. Uh, the Rundge Kutte Nistrom methods uh, have gained widespread acceptance uh, as the numerical solution of molecular dynamics problems. Uh, it was shown in the works of Sofronov, Shemarulis, and uh, Russian authors, and uh, my paper together with uh, Professor Kisilev, uh, that the higher order uh, Runke Kutenistrom schemes pro provide smaller errors in energy in balance than the lower order uh, uh, schemes. <clears throat> Therefore, it makes sense to search for other higher order uh, runke kutenistrom schemes with the objective of find, finding the schemes possessing the highest accuracy in the family of schemes of the same formal order of accuracy. A single uh, symplectic integrator of, of the fourth order accuracy was uh, first obtained in the work of for, Forest, Etienne Forest. Uh, of the year 1987. The same uh, scheme was soon found independently by Neri, but uh, I was unable to find uh, this uh, preprint. Actually, uh, the first published paper was uh, in the year 1990 by Forrest and Ruth. Uh, they also cite uh, the report by Neri but uh, in my present day um, correspondence with this forest, uh, he recognizes that he has still no uh, paper by Neri. It is obscure. <coughs> uh, in this book, all necessary symbolic computations were made uh, by using the computer algebra system uh, reduced in, in, in the work by for Forrest and Ruth. Uh, and, uh, there is also a well-known paper, paper by Yoshida. Uh, he uses uh, the commutators and um, propagators uh, to uh, derive the schemes, and only one of the uh, scheme obtained by Yoshida uh, is the th same as in the work by Forrest and Ruth. Uh, the purpose of this work is to show that uh, by using the technique of, of Gropner basis, it is possible to obtain many other real for other uh, runke kutenistrom methods. The performance of volume methods is ex exemplified by the numerical solution of an applied problem uh, which has the exact solution. The governing equations presented here are the standard uh, Hamilton equations. Uh, they m may be found, for example, in the old book of Landau and Lifshitz, their derivation, and so on. Uh, this results in a system of ordinary differential equations. Uh, it is solved under the given initial conditions, uh, which specify the coordinates and momentums of particles at the initial mo moment of time. Uh, it is known that the solution of Hamilton equations preserves the phase volume. Uh, the, this is the Zivir theorem. Uh, the condition of the uh, phase volume uh, conservation uh, is uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, J is uh, this uh, matrix, I sub n is uh, the identity matrix, but in the case when there is only one particle in the problem, uh, this simplified is simplifies to a two by two matrix. Uh, and uh, the corresponding uh, Hamilton equations have uh, this form, the subscript i uh, will be omitted in the following. <coughs> uh, now uh, we, pr we proceed to the goal of our uh, talk, uh, uh, the description of four-stage symplectic integrators. In the, in the general form, 
the K stage uh, 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 and Nistrom methods uh, have, uh, have uh, uh, this form shown as number five. Uh, it, it is required, similar to the differential case, that uh, the scheme preserves the phase volume. Then we arrive at uh, the following formula, uh, this, this formula, main formula, and this is such a Jacobian. In the case of a single particle, this is a J matrix. Uh, and superscript T denotes the transposition operation. <coughs> uh, now I proceed to the investigation of the truncation error of the four stage schemes. Uh, the technique adopted here is, uh, in fact, the same as in the case of the different schemes for the non symplectic uh, different schemes, which is uh, described uh, in our old uh, books. Uh, and uh, also in the uh, books of Hirer, Warner, Norset, uh, which describes both the schemes for non symplectic scheme, schemes, and uh, one chapter is devoted to symplectic schemes. Uh, so I will not go here into detail. Uh, the, the, these details are well known to. Uh, numerists. And uh, the general form of the uh, 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 truncation error up to the uh, fifth order term, this is uh, the term which we wish to have as the actual leading term. That is, we require that P1 polynomial must be equal to zero, P2, 0, P3, uh, 3, 1, 0, P3, 2, 0, P4, 1, 0, P, P4, 2, 0, and P4, 3, 0. As a result, this gives rise uh, to such polynomial system uh, shown here, uh, formulas number 9. Uh, we have tried uh, to resolve the following question. Uh, does uh, the four-stage scheme contain also the fifth, fifth order uh, accuracy schemes similar to the scheme involving three stages? Because for the three-stage symplectic scheme, there are uh, three schemes, and this is exact result, which have the fourth order of accuracy. It, and it uh, has turned out that uh, the mathematical function of Gropner basis, in the case of, of using all polynomials entering uh, system 9, outputs the result 1. That is, the, the polynomial ideal consists only one <laughs> polynomial of the, the zero order. Uh, this means uh, according to the Hilbert's Nullstellensatz, uh, this is a German word, but uh, it is used uh, yes, uh, also in the English language literature. Nullstellensatz, uh, a uh, theorem about zeros, such as the translation into English. If the ideal is equal to one, then all these polynomials have no common zero. Thus, there, are, there is no fifth order scheme uh, in this uh, multiparametric uh, family of schemes. Uh, if we take only the polynomials P1, P2, P3, 2, and P4, 3, uh, and consider the corresponding polynomial system, it, is, it turns out to be linear in the uh, mm, uh, Parameters gamma, gamma one to gamma four, but its determinant is the van der Bond determinant. Uh, it, it can be seen that it uh, vanishes in six cases. 
because six factors. Uh, we have investigated carefully all six cases of the vanishing of this determinant. As a result, we have found 20 uh, new real uh, symplectic uh, schemes uh, by, simply by, by solving such a system of 11 uh, of uh, the polynomial equations. Uh, uh, and uh, in general, if the real solution to this system exists, then uh, the corresponding four-stage scheme has the fourth order of accuracy. Uh, here is the tables, the tables showing the results. Uh, mm, uh, Kappa critical in, uh, in, in for each scheme is the critical current number for each scheme. Uh, uh, that is, it, it shows the stability limit for each scheme. It uh, was found also uh, in a symbolic form for each scheme. Analytically, uh, for, for, uh, for, to ensure the compact form of, of these tables, uh, we present only the floating form uh, of the stability limit, because uh, in, in most cases, the analytic ex expressions uh, for critical current number are very big. Uh, th th this would need several further page pages, but the limit uh, was pa uh, 20 pages. Uh, uh, thus, in t there are in total 20 sch real schemes. <coughs> uh, the question arises, how to identify the best schemes in terms of its formal fourth order accuracy. Uh, we have uh, used the well-known technique, which uh, is uh, widely employed uh, uh, when studying and uh, deriving the schemes uh, for ordinary differential equations, which uh, are no non-symplectic. Uh, namely, one takes the leading term of the truncation error, constructs uh, such a functional uh, as uh, as uh, shown uh, here, uh, <coughs> uh, this fun a functional sigma sub j are the uh, problem independent constants uh, 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 in, in uh, this general equation for, for the truncation error. For example, the constant 6, uh, 5, uh, one or unity, and so they are problem independent. <coughs> Therefore, uh, th they can be used in the construction of this uh, function to um, account um, more precisely for the influence of each of the polynomials entering the leading uh, term of the truncation error. In this way, was found that the scheme number seven is the best one. It is pre presented here. Uh, this, this scheme. Uh, uh, I, I can explain why this scheme uh, has proved to be the best one. As a matter of fact, uh, it has one free parameter, uh, gamma four. So we can require that Mm, uh, gamma 4 uh, optimal minimizes the, the functional. Uh, and the, uh, this value was found in analytic uh, form, very big form. Therefore, I present only the uh, floating point uh, value uh, of this uh, number. Uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, now it it is it worth considering uh, the, the case of the non-zero van der Mond determinant mm, because the cases uh, of the vanishing van der Mond determinant were only particular cases, but there are of course in, in the nature, as we may think, also the cases when the corresponding van der Mond determinant uh, is non-zero. <coughs> uh, 
there are no so-called uh, symplectic invertible schemes. Uh, the, the parameters of the, the, the four-stage schemes must, must satisfy these equalities. If we uh, use them and substitute in the polynomials under study, we obtain this much simpler polynomial system. It is easily solved without uh, the Kropner basis, simply by the mathematical function solve. And it finds four solutions. All of them are presented here on this slide. The first two solutions do not contain three parameters, and the solutions number three and uh, four contain the three parameter gamma three. Uh, its optimal value was found for the, these sch two schemes, number three and number four. Uh, and uh, it, it has turned out that uh, the best uh, scheme is the scheme number uh, four. Uh, the scheme in, uh, which also involves this parameter, but in view of the fact that gamma three, three is uh, arbitrary, we can uh, optimize the leading term of the error by appropriate choice of the gamma tree. Uh, and finally, we can treat the problem of solving the problem, the system of polynomial equations under study numerically, a pure numerical. To this end, we have constructed such a uh, quadratic uh, uh, functional here. This is not our invention. This is, uh, has been used both for non symplectic schemes and symplectic schemes in several uh, thick uh, books. And in our case, we were able to minimize uh, this function with the aid of the mat mathematical function uh, and minimize. Uh, it, it works uh, uh, remarkably well, I, I believe so, uh, so that uh, uh, we have um, taken, for example, 1,000 uh, random uh, initial points for the search, and uh, the program required only from four to six hours or work of a desktop computer, uh, three gigahertz uh, 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 clock frequency. And uh, all schemes uh, were found, new schemes found, uh, namely uh, these four schemes shown here. Uh, uh, if we substitute these parameters into the polynomials which characterize uh, the truncation error, then the exact, the, the result will not be exact, but with some residual. But uh, the values of these uh, residuals uh, for the polynomials amount on the average only to 10 to the pi uh, power minus 15. This is uh, qu quite good for the use of uh, the obtained uh, sch symplectic schemes uh, for the practical solution of uh, molecular dynamics problems. For, for example, by, uh, in one paper of 1994, these uh, residuals were much worse from 10 to the power minus 11 to 10 to the power minus 14. And in our case, all uh, uh, residuals were s so small. And this is owing to high precision arith arithmetic, uh, which is available in the computer algebra, uh, and uh, was uh, realized in the computer al algebra system mathematically. Uh, we have uh, tested all 28 uh, schemes, found schemes on the Kepler's problem, because uh, this is a problem which has uh, uh, the uh, exact analytic uh, solution. Uh, uh, we have two particles. Each particle has uh, two coordinates. And, and in addition, 
we need to account also for the momentums uh, of each particle. So we have eight equations in our uh, system of water differential, this system of eight equations. Uh, the solution, the exact solution is known. It, it is found at the given initial conditions shown here, formulas 28, and uh, figure two illustrates the way in which we specify the initial conditions for this problem. Uh, uh, as seen here, the um, particle number one uh, uh, the velocity of this particle are directed along the uh, y-axis, and the particle number uh, two uh, moves uh, downwards with respect to the y-axis in opposite directions. And uh, here is the result in the, obtained in the case of the zero eccentricity, because in, in this particular case, each particle moves along a circular orbit, and both particles <laughs> move along the same circular particle. And uh, uh, the actual accuracy is so high that uh, all schemes produce the same picture shown here uh, with no deviations, so very ac accurate solutions. Despite the fact that uh, uh, the time until which, uh, uh, which uh, the, the solution was made is uh, uh, here, 35.7 in dimensional units, uh, and the number of time steps, uh, I do not remember uh, exactly, about 7,500 time, time steps. But uh, uh, this is a relatively simple sub-problem. Sub uh, here is the exact solution. It is expressed in terms of the cosine and uh, sine functions, and the eccentricity is available here. Uh, e. e is equal to this formula. All the parameters are known for this task. <coughs> and, uh, this, these tables present only a small part of all uh, numerous runs which we have made to test all 28 schemes. Uh, uh, for example, the upper table uh, shows the results to compare different runge kutten methods in terms of accuracy. And the fourth order schemes possess the highest accuracy of the energy conservation. This is in the case of the zero eccentricity here. Uh, uh, after that, we have considered also the fourth order schemes. <coughs> uh, uh, in all cases, the fourth order schemes uh, have higher uh, accuracy of the preservation of the energy conservation. And uh, the optimal schemes, which we have found, uh, have somewhat smaller error in, error, uh, error in energy. Uh, 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 this picture shows the case when the eccentricity differs from zero, then the orb orbits are elliptic, uh, uh, but uh, uh, they are different, uh, uh, located differently in the XY plane uh, and intersect one another at certain moments of time. Uh, this problem uh, can be considered also in the context of the celestial mechanics. And uh, uh, here is the case of different masses. Uh, the masses of the left, of the right particle, uh, m1 is equal to 1, the, uh, and the left particle has mass 5. Uh, eccentricity is 0, is taken 0. They rotate along uh, circular orbits, but the orbits are diff uh, different, uh, have different radii. And the right case, uh, uh, the right case shows uh, the case when uh, the right particle has smaller 
West and one one and the left particle particle number two is heavier. Then uh, uh, there is such a difference in the location of orbits. They are elliptic and different size, sizes of the semi axis. But uh, the coincidence with the exact solution is um, super. <coughs> Uh, uh, so I can now formulate uh, the conclusions. Uh, the first conclusion is that 20 simplectic four-stage schemes were obtained uh, in the case of uh, vanishing quantum mode determinants. The second refers to the inverted schemes. And uh, the third conclusion refers to four schemes which were obtained purely numerically but using the polynomials which were obtained analytically in symbolic form as a result of uh, sufficiently big uh, symbolic computations for which um, we had to use some tricks to introduce many intermediate notations. Otherwise, the memory of the computer was not enough. Uh, and the, the final conclusion is that the numerical computations of a test problem have confirmed a high accuracy of all 28 found real four stage schemes. Uh, I have finished. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, please, questions for Professor Varosov. Do you have a question? And I have a question. Uh, please, uh, Evgeny, do, what, um, you have made a numerical calculation only in uh, Wolfram Mathematica, or you mm -hmm. use uh, some uh, numerical packages? Uh, no, no, only Wolfram Mathematica. All, all numeric uh, calculation was made in Mathemat in Wolfram. Uh, no, uh, uh, numerical computations. Uh, as symbolic computations and stability investigations uh, were done with Mathematica, but numerical computations were done in Fortran. In Fortran uh, li libraries? Uh, Fortran? Fortran library uh, packages? Uh, uh, no library, uh -huh. my own. Ah, your own Computer package. Code. Your own, uh, have made yes. in your own package. It, uh, one code implements all five schemes. Okay, uh, in, in Fortran? In Fortran, okay. Fortran 90. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice, <laughs> thank you. A very convenient uh, uh, program. No, but Fortran is uh, now used, uh, is, is no. used. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I, yes uh, I know this article, I have it uh, on my desk. But he has only a very small number of uh, schemes, four stage schemes, o only one or two. And the method of uh, Grobner basis enables many times uh, obtain the obtaining of uh, many larger times of, uh, time, uh, times of schemes, which are also real and have the same um, fourth order. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I now have a correspondence with Etienne Forrest mm -hmm. because uh, my paper is considered now also extended mm -hmm. in, in a certain American journal. Mm -hmm. uh, he is delighted by the re <laughs> results. For your results, <laughs> yes. And uh, he writes to me in French because he's uh, in French America and French. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, that, uh, I, uh, he is originally in Can Canadian, uh, Canadian Canada. scientist. Ah. Because and now he is a citizen of Japan. Because he is a native, uh, 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 his uh, uh, native language uh, is French, yes, in Canadian. In Can uh, Canadian French, yes. Uh, uh, he writes <laughs> that he at first did not want to review mm -hmm. uh, the paper. It is similar to this talk, but uh, more detailed. Uh, because uh, this technique of Grobner basis has proved to be not familiar for him, mm -hmm. and he was very surprised mm -hmm. that this technique enables the obtaining to, to of obtain a new much results. larger mm -hmm. number of real schemes. Mm -hmm. But this gives us the freedom to choose the best schemes, mm -hmm. 
when you have, for example, a larger choice of goods. From this fa family of schemes, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, the best one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you mm -hmm. for, your, for your talk. <coughs> and <coughs> the last talk of, of after afternoon ah. session was uh, will be presented by Dmitry Dimakov and Anastasia Tutun. Who will present Anastasia or Dmitry? Ah, Dmitry, oh, okay. <laughs> ah, where is Dmitry? Ah, Dmitry here. <laughs> Please, Dmitry, symbolic solution of a system of functional equation arising from the cross-section method. Раз, раз. Да. Вроде слышно. Он мог плохо войти, да. Он, он дурацкий такой, знаете. Ну, скоро там тоже будет нормально. Ну, вставлялся, наверное. Видите, одни проблемы. А, я понял. Вот хуйня. Ага. Поможете на экране открыть? Ага, да. Пару все потухло. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, my name is Dmitry, and uh, today I will tell you about a uh, symbolic solution of system of functional equations arising from the cross-section method. Uh, the structure of the presentation is presented here in the slide. It is uh, introduction, motivation, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. Let's start from uh, introduction. There are various approaches to modeling optical phenomena. Uh, they can be divided into two large groups, symbolic and uh, numerical. Uh, symbolic approaches include uh, those methods uh, within which important special cases of the solution are signed out, which allow simplifying the model equations at the symbolic level and uh, further investigating the obtained simplified equations at the symbolic level or using numerical methods. The computational problem in this approach is always simpler than in the numerical approaches described further due to simplifications made at the symbolic level. In addition, the symbolic approach often allows constructing a physically understandable solution. Within the framework of uh, purely numerical approaches, after setting the problem, the construction of the method for its approximate solution immediately follows. Either a finite difference method, sometimes methods uh, based on Galerkin or Kantarovich expansions, and sometimes it's a finite element method. The numerical approach uh, virtually always excludes analytical simplification of the presented model. However, in the numerical approach, it is possible to construct methods suitable for uh, studying a wide class of problems with a high degree of arbitrariness in the model parameters. One of the first methods for studying the spectral characteristics of smoothly irregular waveguides is the cross-sectional method proposed by Katsanelinbaum for uh, closed waveguides and generalized to open waveguides by his pupil Shevchenko. A specific feature of the cross-sectional method is the symbolic form of the solution in which the sort function is explicitly present which determines the phase constant uh, of the corresponding waveguide mode in each cross-section of the waveguide. To determine the electromagnetic field of a given waveguide mode, it is uh, necessary to solve a spectral problem of a special type, 
which in a fixed uh, cross-section of the waveguide is the sturm uh, liouville problem for a second-order differential operator on the whole axis. Within the framework of this work, a system of functional equations obtained from the spectral problem arising from the method of cross-sections is considered. This system is investigated at the symbolic level and for the study, a symbolic algorithm has been developed and implemented in the Maple Computer Algebra system. So, motivation. Within the framework of the cross-sectional method, the following spectral problem can be obtained. It is presented here in the slide uh, on formula with number one. Uh, the desired quantities are x the big and gamma. The square brackets uh, mean the uh, jump of the function. And uh, k0 is the uh, wave number. Uh, function h is the variable thickness of the waveguide layer. And the function n, specifying the piecewise constant refractive index, is defined uh, here in the slide in a formula with number two. The general solution of the equation from one that satisfies the asymptotic condition has the following form, which presented here in the slide in formula number three. To satisfy the matching condition at the boundaries, it is necessary that the following functional equations can be satisfied. It is formula number four. The desired quantities are AF, BF, AS, AC, and the quantity gamma. All of, this, uh, all of these quantities uh, inside this system depends on Z. System four can be written in the following form with number five. Uh, matrix M uh, depends on gamma multiplied by desired vector A equals zero vector where the coefficients of matrix M depend on the solid quantity gamma non-linearly and uh, the system being linear with respect to the unknowns AC, AF, BF, AS. At any fixed Z, system five uh, takes the form of a homogeneous system of equations, which presented here in a uh, formula with number six. Uh, this system uh, always has a trivial solution. Uh, if determinant of matrix M is not zero, then the trivial solution is unique. And if determinant equals zero, then in addition to the trivial solution, system has at least one non-trivial solution, but in fact, infinitely many solutions. Numerical algorithms for solving system five are based on introducing a grid by Z and repeated numerical solution of the homogeneous system of the type six at each fixed value Z. A uh, numerical solution of uh, system six comprises two problems. Uh, the first problem is approximate calculation of all roots of the nonlinear equation determinant M equals zero. And the second problem is approximate calculation of a non-trivial solution of the homogeneous system of the type M multiplied by a desired vector A equals zero for each uh, root which was calculated on the first step. <coughs> Uh, problem one uh, in the case of real roots is solved without any significant complications, unlike problem two, which is an ill-posed problem because it has infinitely many solutions and often requires the use of regularization methods. But here in the work, we would try another uh, symbolic approach to solve it. The calculation of desired quantity gamma is implemented numerically by introducing a grid by Z and multiple numerical solution of the nonlinear equation determinant m equals zero for each z uh, using the classic bisection uh, method. Uh, numerical uh, method for calculating uh, desired vector a consists in finding a non-trivial solution uh, to the system uh, of type uh, matrix m multiplied by desired vector a equals zero. A non-trivial solution of this system is an eigenvector corresponding to a nearly zero eigenvalue of the matrix and its finding is implemented by the method eigenvectors of the package linear algebra in Maple. Taking into account what was stated in the previous section, the quantity gamma will be considered known because we can find it approximately with an arbitrary small error. 
So we developed a symbolic method to solve the problem m uh, depending on uh, quantity gamma multiplied by desired vector a equals zero uh, using standard methods of the package linear algebra built in uh, in Maple. The uh, developed algorithm is presented here in the slide. On the right, uh, on, on the right uh, side of the slide, it is nothing more uh, than uh, the method of Gauss, uh, which uses the special structure of the matrix matrix uh, under uh, consideration. Let's go to results. Let's apply the developed symbolic algorithm to uh, to the considered homogeneous system four. As a result, we obtain the following different symbolic representation of the solution to the homogeneous system number four. Here we have uh, the four uh, different uh, symbolic representation of, uh, of the system solution, A1, A2, A3, A4. All of them are purely symbolic and all of them are different from each other. And next we go to the uh, numerical results. Uh, let's first uh, calculate approximately the value of uh, desired quantity gamma and then calculate desired vector A based on uh, explicit symbolic expressions presented uh, on the previous slide and using a numerical algorithm and compare the results uh, between each other. Uh, the calculation, uh, calculations will be carried out for the following parameters value. Uh, lambda is the wave length, uh, K0 is the wave number, an f and, uh, uh, and, and function h depends on that uh, describes the variable thickness of the wave guide layer. In other words, we will consider uh, such a wave guide. Uh, the blue one is the wave guiding layer with uh, the variable thickness, uh, which uh, which is the function uh, h uh, from z. Uh, and c and f and s are the uh, three uh, refractive indices of three layers of this wave guide. And along uh, this waveguide, the waveguide modes will be uh, will be traveling, and I will show you further. So first of all, we calculated the desired quantities gamma. It is two quantities gamma one and gamma two. Each of them corresponds to uh, gamma first corresponds to first waveguide mode, and gamma uh, two corresponds to the second waveguide mode. So uh, here we have the result. It is the first waveguide mode, which uh, travels along the waveguide. And here we have the second waveguide mode, which is also travels uh, along uh, such a waveguide. But uh, this example is uh, not very interesting because it's, uh, it's just uh, showing that everything is work and uh, everything w works, everything is okay. But next I will show you the little bit uh, more interesting example. Uh, if we have uh, such a waveguide which has uh, two layers, two waveguide layers, uh, one of them uh, which is uh, marked as NL has the refractive index uh, which is bigger than the refractive index of the first waveguiding layer. And I will show you what does it mean. So uh, here we have the also the first waveguide uh, mode which travels along uh, such a waveguide. But uh, here we have uh, two waveguiding layers and when the mode travels uh, inside the second waveguide layer, uh, it is uh, trying to, to flow inside this layer because it has a bigger refractive index, as you can see. And on the next slide, uh, the same situation, but uh, for the second waveguide mode. All of these results uh, were, uh, were numerically uh, obtained using the uh, implicit uh, symbolic representation which was uh, presented in the results section previously. And also we, we compare uh, the numerical investigation, we compare the numerical, purely numerical results uh, and results obtained using the implicit uh, symbolic formulas obtained. Uh, S equals one means that uh, these calculations made for, made for the first waveguide mode and S equals two means that the calculations is made for the second waveguide mode. As you can see, the error between purely uh, numerical result A and uh, results A1, A2, A3, A4, which was uh, calculated using the implicit uh, symbolic uh, formulas, uh, they have an uh, error about 10 power by minus uh, 13, 10 powered by minus 14. So it's sufficiently small error for practical calculations. So conclusion. Uh, several different symbolic representations uh, of the solution of the homogeneous system were obtained. 
the presence of uh, symbolic representation of the solution is uh, important for assessing the possibility of the cross-sectional method. Uh, within the framework of numerical exper experiments, we answered the question uh, about the numerical equivalence of all symbolic representation of the system solution. And it is also important to know that the symbolic representations of the solution give the same accuracy as the purely numerical method. And here is the references. Also, it is uh, important to know that it's not a uh, big and completed work. It's just a kind of first step. That's why it takes only 13 minutes. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Dmitry. Please, colleagues, questions, please. Uh, your questions, mm -hmm. please. I have uh, two question, questions. Mm -hmm. uh, at a single place of your lecture, you have mentioned that uh, your problem is uh, inverse problem. And, and so you have used uh, the bisection method. But why have you not uh, used the Tikhonov's regularization method, for example, uh, which was specifically uh, in, mm -hmm. uh, invented by an uh, academician, Tikhonov for solving the inverse problem? Uh, this is one question. The second question is only a, a little remark. The gold section <laughs> method is somewhat better in terms of the number of, of uh, sections than the bisection method. Mm -hmm. So you can generally in this way improve. There are theoretical estimates for gold section and bisection, mm -hmm. but uh, the gain is about 1.5, uh, uh, about so. But if you must uh, do many computations, then the gain in computer time may be mm -hmm. sufficiently significant. Okay. Answer. <laughs> yes. Uh, the first question about uh, Tikhonov regularization. Uh, uh, also, we used the regularized methods. It is uh, called purely numerical uh, method. We used it, and uh, it works good, and it gives uh, the solution. Uh, but when we have implicit symbolic formula, it is better for this method because sometimes we need to uh, calculate derivative or something else. And uh, if you have only just a lot of uh, a lot of numbers, uh, sometimes it's not very good. And uh, it is better for physicians and for physical meaning when we have the uh, implicit formula. Maybe you want to, s uh, uh, maybe you want to say that. Uh, the Tikhonov's method sometimes diverges, or not? Uh, sometimes, sorry? Diverges. No, it works very good. It works very good. It's uh, okay with uh, Tikhonov's uh, regularization. Uh, 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 always very good. Uh, it works very good, yes. Thank you. And I have a short question. And uh, you, you can calculate um, eigenvalues uh, symbolically. You, you mentioned about you have package in Maple. Mm -hmm. It, you can uh, calculate symbolically mm -hmm. eigenvalues. Uh, uh, in what cases? Okay. Uh, in this work, we cal calculate uh, it numerically, but in previous uh, work, uh, uh, one year ago, or two years ago, we calculated, for, uh, not for this problem, but mm -hmm. for similar problem uh, in waveguiding theory, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we calculate the eigenvectors symbolically, and uh, it, is, uh, it is a very big deal for, uh, for solution, because uh, it's in case, in, in vector cases mm -hmm. and there we need uh, a, a more complicated problem and because of the calculation of eigenvectors and symbolic form it mm -hmm. really uh, it is uh, super good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but Same. not this uh, here but we it's, uh, mm -hmm. not not <laughs> it's very complicated problem <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. thank you very much no more questions no question we now we closed our after lunch session thank you very much mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we have a um, um, coffee break until 5, 5 p.m.
We are going to start our evening session. The first talk is going to be by Victor Pan, New Progress in Polynomial Root Finding. Uh, yeah, please start if you can hear us. We can't hear you. Uh. Okay, I think we can see you, but we can't see your uh, uh, desktop. Are you telling something? Yeah, I was telling that no, you don't I, have I your desktop share. Maybe I should move more. I don't see for you. Um, there should be uh, a green maybe button. Maybe it's uh, too low still. I, I yeah. don't hear anything over there. I can see people, but don't uh, hear anything. Is there a problem on I our side? Okay. I don't hear anything. Uh, I should start in a minute. Actually, I... okay, let me go try to my wife video. Uh, Maybe you have your head headphones on. Uh, Okay, colleagues, I propose we move on, and if Tian Chen or Michael Monaghan are here... Uh, okay, okay. Uh, then the next talk is going to be by Remy Imbach and Victor Pan. I don't know who is going to present the... Uh, okay, Remy Imbach, Root Ready and Subdivisions for Polynomial Root Finding. Please, the floor is yours. Screen. Uh, okay. um, we can't see your screen. I think we yeah. can hear you. Okay. So can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Please start. And you can hear me. Okay. Yeah, so hello we can everybody. Hear you very well. So this is an honor for me to present this joint work with Victor. 
It's about um, root ready computation and subdivision algorithms for polynomial root finding. Um, well, so let me first introduce what are uh, root ready. So we consider a polynomial uh, with any kind of coefficients of degree d. And here I will illustrate my introduction with this uh, Mandelbrot polynomial of degree 15. Um, its 15 roots are those blue points. And the recursive definition of this polynomial is given here. So, so uh, I'm sorry, Remy. I ask all the participants uh, besides Remy to switch off their microphones, please. Okay, please, Remy. I think the problem is solved. Okay. Okay. So let's say that the d roots of, of p are alpha one, alpha two, etc., to alpha d of p, and let's say that they are indexed. I mean, the alpha i's are indexed so that um, the modulus of alpha i decreases when i increases. So alpha one of p will be the root that is the furthest to zero, and alpha d will be the root that is the closest to zero. So let's call the modulus of alpha i of p, the i's would reduce for p, let's make it r i of p. So here, the radius of this outer circle will be R1 of P, and the radius of this inner circle will be R14 or R15 of P. So those two guys are equal because uh, the two roots that are the closest to uh, zero are complex conjugate. And here are circles representing, representing all the um, root ready. So now the root ready covering problem is to uh, approximate each of the rs of p. So be given um, a positive number delta for rs of p, we want to find a number rho s satisfying this inequality. So for uh, rs of p, uh, rho s together with delta defines an interval in which lies rs of p. and if we take a look on the complex plane, it also defines an annulus in which lies um, alpha s of p. Well, if we compute all the rho i's, we will obtain a set of anomaly uh, containing all the um, containing all the roots, and those anomaly can intersect. But if we compute um, the connected components of all those anomaly. Then we will obtain a set of non-intersecting annuli that we will call, call an annuli cover of the roots. So the area of this annuli cover depends on uh, the value of delta. Um, here it was for delta equals one over d, and now it's for delta equals one over d squared. So we also want to uh, consider this problem for the distances of the roots not only to zero, but uh, to any complex number C. Um, so here it's for C equals zero, but we can do the same for C equals one. And we will obtain what we called an annually cover of the root centered in C. Well, our goal is to use solutions to the RRC problem to improve real and complex root finding based on subdivision. So the root finding problems we consider are first the complex root clustering problem. So be given epsilon, we want to compute a set of pairs delta j, mj, um, so that the delta j's are pairwise disjoint disk of root d less than epsilon. mj is the number of roots counted with multiplicity in delta j, but also in three delta j. This is to retrieve um, a natural structure of clusters of the roots. And we want also that each complex root of P is in a delta J. Well, so the subdivision approach to solve this problem is to first define a big box containing all the roots and then construct a subdivision tree of this box, which nodes will be um, sub boxes of the initial box and apply inclusion exclusion tests to those boxes. 
Next, we will consider the real world isolation problem that is uh, for a polynomial with integer coefficients, compute a set of pairs B, J, M, J, where the, BJ, the BJs are disjoint real intervals. MJ is the multiplicity of a unique root contained in BJ, and each real root of P is contained in a BJ. So it is common to get rid of those multiplicities by considering that P is square free or to make it square free by a GCD computation. But here we don't need this um, trick. Well, so now the subdivision approach to real root isolation is to define a real interval containing all the roots and subdivide it uh, and apply inclusion exclusion tests to those subboxes. Well, now if we take uh, a complexity point of view, um, people in general consider the benchmark problem, which is to isolate all the roots of a square free polynomial with integer coefficients with degree D and bit size two. Well, if we have a look at uh, the size of the solution of such a problem, so it contains D roots, and the sum of those roots can be as close as something okay, like now, now, uh, uh, Okay, now it's all uh, fun. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, so um, uh, it is quite natural to say that no, an no. algorithm using an O of D arithmetic operation no. with precision I, that I is an O again. of D2 um, is optimal. And Pan is introduced there any, this. Is there uh, there right now? Say it again. Is, is the conference now on your laptop? Okay, should I continue? Let's continue, please. Yeah, okay. So now in 2002, Pan achieved, I mean, he proposed so um, muted, you an algorithm which bit complexity is up to polylogarithmic factor uh, optimal. So it is said to be um, near optimal. And it's based on divide and conquer approaches. So it's quite involved, but recently algorithm uh, based on subdivision that are easier to implement have been proposed. So in 2016, an algorithm by Sagwalov and Melon to solve the real root isolation problem, which bit complexity is in a soft O of D squared times D plus two. And for the complex root clustering problem, uh, Becker, Sagwalov, etc. in 2016 proposed an algorithm with the same bit complexity. And actually, this bit complexity is near optimal when uh, 2 is greater than D. Well, so the main contributions of our work are first a practical improvement of subdivision based root finders, both for the real root isolation problem and the complex root clustering problem. And in both cases, for a polynomial P with integer coefficients. So to achieve this practical improvement, we used solution to the um, root radi covering problem. For the case, for the real case, um, we computed one solution uh, centered in zero. And for the uh, complex case, we used three solutions to the complex to the um, root radi covering problem, respectively based in zero, one, and I. So we use those um, annually cover to filter the subdivision tree. We also propose an algorithm for computing um, an annually cover from, from any complex point C, actually um, Gaussian integer C. So this algorithm is not really new. It's adapted from an algorithm by PAN, but it's way easier to implement because we specify the precision to which the computation has to be done. And we proved the bit complexity, which is in line with um, new optimal complexity of root finding for some assumptions on C and delta. So let me move to the second part of this talk, where I present briefly um, our algorithm for solving the root radi covering problem. So again, uh, for a given delta, we want to compute approximation to the Rs of P satisfying this inequality. Well, first we would like to extend this 
problem to consider also distances of the route to any complex point. And this is actually very easily done by doing a shift of the variable of P. So instead of considering the root valley covering problem for P of Z, we consider it for P of C plus Z. So now let me explain how to solve this problem um, by computing a Newton polygon. So here it's for an input polynomial Q, which coefficients are the QIs um, for I from zero to D. So let's define those points PIs, which first coordinate is I, and second coordinate is a logarithm of the um, modulus of QI. So this defines a set of two dimensional points and one can compute the convex hull, or more precisely, the upper part of the convex hull, which will be called CH. And this object is sometimes called the Newton polygon of Q. Well, now this proposition helps to solve the root for covering problem. It says that for an index S, um, consider the edge of CH about, um, above D plus one minus S, and define this number, rho s prime, uh, it's defined by the edge above d plus one minus s, then rs of q satisfies this inequality. So this solves the RRC problem for delta equals two. Now to solve it for any delta, one can apply um, DLG iterations, Dundlin Lobachevsky Greffer iterations, also known as Greffer iterations. So let pg, be the G's, uh, DLG, DLG iteration of P. Um, so alpha I of PG is equal to alpha I of P to the, two to the G. And so RI of PG is equal to RI of P to the two to the G. So as a consequence, by doing a sufficient number of DLG iterations, so by defining Q as PG where G is this number, one can solve the RRC problem for any delta just by computing the convex hull of this set of points. Well, actually, this convex hull is a combinatorial object, so um, computing it requires to decide equality, and this can lead to compute to very high precision. So to partially avoid this problem, we propose to define an approximated Newton polygon so with the previous notations, let pi tilde be the point which first coordinate is i and second one is an approximation up to the error two, minus, two to the minus m to the logarithm of the modulus of qi, and then compute the convex hull ch tilde of this set of points pi tilde. Um, so this gives a convex hull, which can be quite different to uh, CH, the exact convex hull, but we can extend the previous proposition to this corollary. So for an index S, consider the edge of CH tilde above D, D plus one minus S, then define this number, rho tilde prime, it is um, defined by the edge of CH tilde, then RS of Q satisfies this inequality. And in this inequality, uh, this number one plus two to the minus M plus one is involved. And actually when M is greater than one, this number is less than two. So RS satisfies this inequality, um, provided that M is greater than one. Uh, and this solve the RRC problem for delta equals 4D. So again, we can apply some DLG iterations to solve the RRC problem for any delta. And it suffices to compute uh, one bit approximations of the log of the absolute values of the QIs for this. So um, this, unfortunately, this still requires to know um, a separation from zero of the absolute values of the trailing and leading coefficients of Q. So um, in what follows, we will suppose that 
Q is a polynomial with Gaussian integer coefficient. So this separation from zero is obvious. It's one. Um, okay. So we propose an algorithm to solve the ARC problem, and we prove that its bit complexity is in an O soft O of d squared d plus sigma when the absolute value of C is in an O of one and delta is in D of a minus O of one, like one over D or one over D squared. Okay, so now for the third part of this talk, I will um, show how to use a solution for the RRC problem to uh, improve uh, Wood finding algorithms based on subdivision, and I will focus on real wood isolation. So for this, I will first outline the algorithm of PSS 2016 that solves the complex wood clustering problem, then show how we can adapt it to solve the real wood isolation problem, and then show how we use a solution to the RRC problem. So this algorithm is based on two fundamental tools. Uh, a root counter T star, which takes input a disk delta, a complex disk, and returns an integer that can be positive or minus one. If it's positive, let's say it's M, then P has M roots counted with multiplicity in delta. The second tool is an exclusion test, T0. It takes an input a complex disk delta and outputs an integer that can be either minus one or zero. M if it's zero, then P has no root in um, delta. Well, now we interleave those two tools with subdivision. So let's say that we have a list of uh, suspect squares, so squares that can contain roots. First, quadrisect each square into subsquares, four subsquares. And for each suspect square, uh, draw a containing complex disk around it and apply the exclusion test. If it returns zero, then you can exclude the box, otherwise you keep it at suspect. Then group the remaining uh, suspect squares uh, in connected component, and for each connected component, draw a containing disk and apply the road counter. If it returns a positive M, and if three times this containing disk delta do not intersect any other suspect square, then we have a solution to the complex food clustering uh, algorithms. So in BSS 2016, um, the exclusion test is instantiated with the road counter. And this one counter is based on uh, the pellet theorem plus some DLG iterations. And one can draw uh, the property that if uh, the road counter for, an input, for a given input disk returns minus one, then there is a root um, in a small annulus around the contour of the input disk. Um, yeah, so this allows to bound the size and the depth of the subdivision tree. And if one performs uh, Newton iterations or more possibly Schroeder iterations on top of this, one obtain uh, a quadratic convergence to the clusters of roots and uh, one can prove a near optimal bit complexity. Well, now to adapt this for real root isolation, we suppose that P has integer coefficients. We use the same uh, root counter and exclusion test. And instead of subdividing a complex box, we subdivide a real interval. So for each suspect um, interval, one draw a containing complex disk centered in the real line around this interval and apply the exclusion test. If it returns zero, then there is no complex root in delta and no real root in the interval. Well, next, group all remaining suspect intervals into a connected component. And for each connected component, draw a containing complex disk centered in the real line and apply the root counter. If it returns one, then the root uh, in delta has to be real because the complex root comes in complex conjugate pairs. Well, now if the root counter returns the root counter returns m greater than one, then one has to keep subdividing the boxes until uh, containing disk of connected components have radius less than the separation of p, and in which and in this case. 
um, the root in the containing disk is the real root and has multiplicity m. So this allows to um, define a real root isolation algorithm. But the main tool for it is based on the um, Pellet theorem, which requires Taylor shift, which, which is quite um, costly operations. So our goal when using a solution to the root for the problem is to try to avoid those Taylor shifts. So suppose that we have a solution to the RRC problem for C equals zero and delta equals D to the minus two. First, compute the connected component of the anneli and obtain an anneli cover of the roots. And for each analysis of this set, one can um, one knows the number of roots contained in it. And then we define some exclusion rules, meaning that for an interval i, we try to see some rules. Um, I, no, sorry. We try to uh, prove that it does not contain any roots without doing the pellet test. So an obvious rule would be if this interval i do not contain, uh, do not intersect any analysis of the anneli cover, then it does not contain any root. So one can define other exclusion rules and uh, an, exclusion, an exclusion test C0, which will be try the exclusion rules. And if none apply, uh, do uh, the root counter T0. We can, we can do the same. Uh, for inclusion, so for root counter, so we can define inclusion rules. For instance, if an interval i intersects only one analysis, and if one knows that in this analysis there is at most one real root, one can just evaluate the polynomial at the extreme point of the interval i and um, try to prove that it contains a unique real solution. So again, we define a new word counter C star in which we first try inclusion rules and then if none apply, do uh, the word counter C star. Okay, and then we apply the subdivision with C0 and C star as word counter. So we call this procedure R isolate R and we prove that it has a near optimal bit complexity for the benchmark problem. Uh, we implement it. We I'm implement sorry, Remy. Uh, yeah. Uh, could you wrap it up in like three minutes because our time is up yeah. almost. Yeah. Can, okay. Okay. So this procedure has been implemented uh, in the C library C cluster and uh, in its interface for Julia C cluster .jl. So to finish with, let me just give some uh, results on using this. Procedure R isolate R first to solve uh, random polynomials, and I compare it with R isolate, which will be the same algorithm but without root ready computation. So here I report the number. So it's for random polynomials. So those and it's for ten um, polynomials per couples d two, where d is the degree and two is uh, the bit size. So here n1 and n2 are the required number of um, pellet tests to isolate the real roots. So using root 4D allows to divide this number by about 10. And this reduction translates in the solving times. So that is given that are given in those columns. Here it's T2, the solving times of R isolate R over T1, the solving time of R isolate. Here is the solving time, uh, is the ratio of time spent in computing the root ready. And finally, I compare with uh, another algorithm, I mean, another implementation for real root finding, which is the implementation of the Sagalov and Mellon algorithm of 2016. So the implementation is called. Uh, a Newton Descartes. And here I give the solving time and the standard deviation. So since those times are, are rigid and our uh, algorithm performs better, especially when uh, the bit size compared to the degree is uh, big. 
So I also I also have results with other polynomials, but I think that I have to conclude. So in conclusion, I would say that the relative width I used is statically chosen as one over d square, which is heuristic. So with this, we do not intend to separate uh, the roots of the input polynomials. Um, and actually, it can be an, over, an overkill, meaning that one over d could have been sufficient. Um, we also use uh, RFC solutions from three centers to improve complex root clustering, and it leads to um, a speed up that is that of a factor um, about three. And finally, for the possible improvements, so we could use try to find a dynamic choice for the relative width of the um, of the analysis of the annulee for the solution of the RFC problem, mm. and then extend our algorithm for a polynomial with any complex coefficients. Mm. So thank you for your attention, and sorry to okay. have been no, It's all right. So. Let's thank the speaker. Mm. Do we have questions in auditorium? OK. No. Uh, what about online? Okay, then I have a question. Remy, uh, actually, as a user of this kind of algorithm, I have a simple question. Uh, could there be an elaboration over this algorithm which uh, would uh, give me an opportunity to solve the following problem? Let's assume I am given a polynomial equation which is parametric, and I want to find the range of the parameter values where certain number of the, its roots lie within a certain circular uh, strip. Could this problem be efficiently solved with this approach of subdivisions? So your parameter, I mean, you want to find the range for the parameters so that? So that certain number of roots, all, all of them, lie within certain <coughs> circular strip over the complex plane. I'm sorry, there have been some... Yeah, uh, I was asking whether there is a possibility to uh, solve the problem of finding the range of parameters uh, for uh, which uh, the roots of certain polynomial lie in a certain circular strip, certain number of them, some number, all, all of them. Well, basically, for the um, complex version of the algorithm, so the version that uh, find all the complex roots, you can have an input intervals for um, the coefficients. So we could um, uh, feed the algorithm with uh, input polynomial, which coefficients are intervals. But then um, doing the solving will require to be able to get um, arbitrary <laughs> interval for the question, so I'm not sure we could easily do it, um, but it will be interesting to investigate. The, um, if you have any reference to share with me, I could try to have a look. Uh, on I'm it, strictly so. a user. I'm a physicist, so I kind of uh, solve that kind of problems, but in a very inefficient way, just finding the roots, checking they're ready, and etc. So yeah, it, it can be possible, but with, with some adaptation of the uh, method. Okay, thank you very much. If we don't have any further questions, then let's the speak, uh, thank the speaker again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's okay, the next talk is going to be by Victor Pan, New Progress in Polynomial Root Finding. Please. Uh, 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 I am not sure if it is uh, uh, possible. I I'm sorry, Victor. It me. would be there very helpful if you out. moved uh, away but, your uh, microphone from your headset uh, or audio device. But I will try. Okay. So let me tr let me try to do it. <clears throat> let me. I I will first display my uh, hmm. 
uh, <coughs> I will try to display my slides now, and uh, I hope you hear me. Um, we can hear you very well, but yeah, we can't see your screen. No. Um, Victor, I think you have chosen the wrong application to share with us. Um. Open your presentation, please. We can see your Chrome, I think. No, it's not Chrome. We, uh, we can see only your browser, but not the slides. Okay. <coughs> I, <coughs> I hope you can see the screen and... Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here myself. So then I will start uh, talking. If <clears throat> if there are problems, then uh, you will uh, stop. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, that will be. Um, uh, we'll, we'll try to do it another time. <clears throat> okay. So uh, <clears throat> that's my uh, talk, and uh, I uh, will try to. Uh, explain the, the problem. Uh, it is. Uh, please uh, move your microphone away from your headset, please, or your audio device. I don't know what you use. Okay, please go on. Okay. So, uh, let me go ahead. Uh, I will talk about polynomial root finding, uh, which was a venerable classical problem. It's still high, highly important. Uh, uh, the problem can be stated in this way. And then, uh, Victor, пожалуйста, уберите ваш микрофон от, от динамиков, Виктор Яковлевич, пожалуйста, немного подальше поставьте ваши динамики от микрофона. У нас генерация ужасная. Виктор Яковлевич, еще можете во весь экран сделать презентацию? Uh, uh, it's not. Uh, it's another problem with uh, implementation, and the second one was implemented, and turns out uh, that it's a uh, record best uh, root finding in a disk. Uh, but last year it was uh, accelerated by a factor of three. Uh, Uh, and now uh, we have solution which is much faster. Moreover, it is uh, also um, apl applied in the case where the input uh, is given by uh, not coefficients of the polynomial, but uh, by black box for its evaluation. And it's important class because it covers sparse polynomials, polynomials of this type, which are not sparse, but easy to evaluate. And Mandelbrot polynomials uh, well known, and <coughs> for that class of polynomials, 
uh, there is empty progress so far, almost empty, next to nothing. And now uh, we accelerate uh, uh, to some extent uh, algorithm by Becker et al, but also uh, applied to black box polynomial. Acceleration can be only within polylog factors, uh, but it is important for practice. But for black box polynomials, it's a dramatic acceleration. Uh, we, like Becker and Pyle and other uh, authors from uh, 1924 to 2000, uh, we rely on sub subdivision iterations, <coughs> which <coughs> Analyze uh, bisection uh, for real root finding on a, on a line to polynomial root finding in a complex plane. Uh, pro people proceed uh, similar to bisection, that is, removing some <coughs> area when the roots uh, cannot uh, lie and leave with the roots, uh, with the areas where the roots can lie. And uh, <coughs> eventually uh, narrow this area. So initially there are, uh, uh, there is a big square containing all roots. <coughs> and then uh, we remove empty squares uh, and <coughs> narrow the search to the roots. Uh, <coughs> removing squares, empty squares, I call exclusion tests. We need to verify that we do not lose uh, uh, roots when we uh, remove squares. Uh, now we uh, use uh, actually uh, exclusion for a disk, it's more, more efficient. Uh, so we superscribe the uh, square with a disk and discard it if the disk contains no roots. Otherwise, we subdivide the uh, square further, call it suspect, and uh, continue our search uh, until we succeed. Uh, a root can uh, lie in uh, at most four suspect square, so we need to test just at most 4D suspect squares per iteration. So that's restrict complexity, uh, balance complexity favorable to us. Centers of all suspect squares approximates all roots within half diameter, and uh, this is the crisis by twice in a subdivision, so convergence is linear, uh, which is reliable, but not fast enough because uh, well, for uh, that optimal, nearly optimal bound, at least it's not fast enough. For instance, here we approximate uh, roots in a green uh, square uh, in five steps uh, through blue, uh, blue points, blue uh, centers of the suspect squares, but uh, with other means, uh, we can do it in a single step. So that's what uh, our next goal. So five blue marked centers uh, uh, versus two red marked Schroeder iterates. Uh, okay. uh, Schroeder iterate uh, is uh, just this uh, simple extension of Newton's. When we know that the disk uh, which contains the roots inside larger disk uh, uh, is uh, has m roots then we put m here it's convenient because we can uh, fast evaluate uh, p and p prime uh, uh, and uh, we cannot evaluate higher order derivatives which uh, could be alternative way well i mean that we could not evaluate fast high order derivatives of black box polynomial but uh, first derivative okay and convergence is quadratic in the sense that uh, uh, distance to uh, the roots decreases uh, in this way by fa uh, factor two to the, two to the i for uh, i iterations. So convergence with quadratic rate is known for multiple roots with for sure other separations, but was uh, proved not to uh, the roots, the multiple roots, but with some estimates to uh, uh, disk containing m roots. If it is isolated from external uh, from external roots, uh, we need to explain isolation uh, formally. There is quantitative way, 
uh, if we have roots uh, uh, outside the big uh, circle and inside small circle, then the isolation of smaller disk is R capital over R small. Um, but uh, we also introduce a rigidity of the smaller disk. Uh, it's opposite ratio, R small over R capital, show that we can move um, large disk more uh, than by this ratio uh, unless we lose roots. We uh, say disk are equivalent if they share root set. Okay, so uh, with this concept, it's uh, uh, convenient to explain the goal uh, of um, uh, next goal to remove extraneous uh, exclusion test. We just need to compress larger disk uh, so to get nearly rigid uh, equivalent disk. If we get it this way, then subdivision iterations very uh, quickly separate the roots. Uh, make um, uh, suspect squares forming uh, di di uh, different components. Uh, always uh, suspect squares form components, uh, uh, but it could be single components. But then when the uh, side lens halved, the suspect squares become small. And so if um, uh, the disk is rigid and we cover it by uh, minimal uh, superscribing uh, square and apply subdivision iteration, then very soon we get uh, more than one component. So the goal is uh, to uh, twofold goals. We need to uh, specify exclusion test, and then we need to specify how we can compress uh, uh, isolated disk to uh, rigid disk keeping it equivalent. So exclusion. For exclusion, we use uh, forget, uh, well, for, well, uh, uh, forgotten tool, uh, which turns out to be very efficient. We approximate power sums of the roots uh, uh, in a disk. Turns out that it is uh, efficient, uh, can be done efficiently. And this is relevant to exclusion test because uh, uh, exclude S0 is the number of roots uh, in the disk. Uh, and all, uh, so if S0 is smaller, uh, zero, then uh, there is no root. And also we may compute all uh, uh, power sums. If no roots, then they are all small and vice versa. And the approximation of S0 is enough to do with, within one half because it's integer. Okay. Um, so we approximate uh, Cauchy integral uh, with Cauchy sums. Uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, essentially few evaluations uh, of uh, the ratio P prime over P, uh, uh, Q, Q naught. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we can take them equally distributed on the bounding circle. Uh, and then uh, uh, it's enough to do Q um, evaluation. Q is the number of po points on the circle. The more points, the harder evaluation the, uh, and, the, uh, the, and the closer approximation. Turns out that uh, hardness uh, and closeness is uh, to our favor. Uh, that is uh, log uh, logarithmic, uh, logarithmic in D number of points allows uh, uh, approximation within uh, uh, two to the uh, within d uh, one over d um, uh, uh, error at bound so it is sufficient to evaluate uh, at 21 nodes or even in 20 nodes if uh, uh, for million d in order to uh, get approximation uh, within one half Okay. So it is uh, uh, the only requirement is uh, some isolation from uh, of the boundary circle from the roots, uh, and uh, uh, our isolation we uh, we need big requirements. For instance, 
Isolation 2 uh, is a uh, dream of previous uh, previous works because uh, they need uh, much higher 5Z square, for instance, for their uh, works. Okay, now <clears throat> to cer certify exclusion, uh, because if we don't know if the uh, circle is isolated, we need more work, uh, but then uh, uh, we can do it with Z points instead of log T, uh, evaluation at Z points. But empirically, we can do, uh, always can do with uh, log D points, uh, according to our tests, extensive tests. Now let me go to the second part. Let me go again to <clears throat> the picture uh, where we uh, uh, slowly approximate uh, the <clears throat> cluster with bisection and fast with uh, Schroeder saturation. <clears throat> Uh, Schroeder saturation very efficient, but uh, require more work. I will try to <clears throat> explain what can be done instead with um, less, uh, well, more transparent way. Uh, uh, so we uh, repeat our goal to compress uh, isolated uh, disk and took rigid disk, um, uh, keeping it equivalent. And for that, we uh, do in these steps. First, uh, compress, then superscribe this disk with minimal square and apply to its subdivision iteration. And as I said, we uh, very soon get separation. And the, uh, it, it, it can be said more that when we get separation, <coughs> it's enough uh, uh, to do it uh, D minus one times because um, uh, there are only D, D roots and so D components at most. Uh, and so D minus one partition, D minus one uh, compression. Uh, and when we ha have this separation, then it's enough to uh, apply D compression again to at most D compression again to cover every cluster or every root uh, with epsilon disk total number of compression to d minus one. And we need also uh, overall most all, all of d log d exclusion test. That can be explained if we have a couple of minutes left uh, for that. Uh, I mean, why uh, exclusion tests are so nicely bound. Uh, well, now uh, how can we do compression instead of Schroeder's iteration without Schroeder's iteration. We, comp uh, we compute first the number of hooks in a disk. Since it's isolated, we can do it fast with Cauchy sum. Uh, uh, then we uh, compute first Cauchy sum, which is a sum of roots in a disk and divided by M, uh, number which we computed here. Uh, that will be uh, average of the root. Uh, send uh, center of gravity. It's, de it's def definitely e is in the cluster. So with a pro good approximation, we are near the root set. And now we need to approximate the largest distance from that point to a root uh, lying in the disk D. Well, uh, the disk uh, uh, G then will be rigid and equivalent to a, rigid, a new disk will be uh, uh, this disk will be rigid and equivalent to it. That's what we need. How we would approximate rho? Uh, we let's assume that m is not very large. Then we compute the fact factor that shares with p all uh, m roots in a disk D. Uh, and then. We can use simple known bound on the largest distance from T to the root of this factor, which is um, uh, um, maximum distance to the root uh, uh, from C to in the disk, lying in the disk. Uh, so we uh, have, since we know the coefficients of this factor, we can apply the known bounds and get close approximation. Okay, now uh, how can we compute the factor? Uh, we uh, can 
approximate clothes with Kashi sums, uh, to compute Kashi sums efficiently, uh, they will closely approximate power sums. Uh, and since the disk T is isolated, the cost is low. Now we approximate the coefficients by solving diagonally the dominant triangular linear system of M Newton's identities, which is uh, M square and uh, numerically stable way because system is triangular. It's also structured, can be solved faster, but uh, with tax uh, substitution, it's quite stable numerically and uh, uh, fast enough for us because cost, uh, this cost <clears throat> will be dominated. Now, uh, 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 yeah, well, there is one no here that uh, there are numeric, numerical problems with uh, computing um, factor uh, because from Cauchy sum to, to factor it's uh, stable, but uh, uh, coefficients are uh, uh, numeric, have numerical computing coefficients have numerical problems anyway because they have uh, varying magnitude uh, and for large M it is not that convenient. Uh, okay, so uh, we should apply Schroeder's certified compression. It's much more involved that I explained here, uh, but it can be done. Uh, it's slower by factor of log log D, which is not significant, uh, and only ensures rigidity within this factor versus one quarter with uh, previous way. But it's not terribly bad because it means extra log the uh, uh, exclusion uh, test pay for subdivision. But it's avoid numerical problems. And more uh, maybe uh, as important is that uh, it allows probabilistic heuristic version, which is faster by factor of D over log D. So uh, with uh, brain and sweat, <laughs> brains and sweat, we uh, can do this and get this factor. Uh, of course, uh, it is unlikely but plausible that with uh, heuristic probabilistic ways uh, we lose some roots. Probably not much, not many, because uh, it's unlikely by our estimate and tests. Uh, uh, but in that case, we would tame approximate d minus w root, uh, say uh, the last uh, d minus w roots. But uh, first w root for small w uh, would remain at large and we would need to hunt for them. Uh, but then we can readily deflate the wild factor uh, with the root set, uh, with the wild root set uh, and having small degree. And uh, then uh, 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 for that, we don't need uh, even power sums. We can use evaluation interpolation by Tom 63. Uh, and then we uh, approximate roots of uh, factor. Uh, uh, since degree is small, it should not be hard and we readily certify them. Okay. So that's uh, the way uh, we proceed. Well, uh, this is like how we uh, prove the bound deal of D for number of exclusion tests. It's, uh, it's si simple. Represent components made by uh, suspect square by a tree with at most D leaves and at most D, two D minus one purposes and apply compressions uh, at most 2d minus one times, one per vertex. And then, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, the tree has uh, log d levels, su subdivision steps. <clears throat> so it's uh, at most 4d uh, log d suspect squares. There are some, sus some exclusion tests uh, in between but it can't be proved. We can prove the backward from compression steps. The number of suspect squares grows 
geometrically up, and hence we need uh, order of D log D exclusion test overall. That's essentially uh, all uh, selected techniques that um, I uh, can time to present. I can mention that for exclusion test, we have this theorem in the uh, archive, archive, but uh, we have even faster uh, new certified inclusion test, uh, exclusion test, which we uh, will include into next revision of the archive. Okay, I, I hope you could hear me. So I will repeat what I said in the beginning. Uh, okay. So we accelerate uh, root uh, subdivision root finder by Becker and Tal, which was nearly optimal, and uh, uh, can apply our uh, new root finder to a black box polynomial with no loss of um, efficiency. Thank you. Uh, I Thank hope you. you heard me. I uh, can go to another room and try to hear uh, you because in another in another room uh, I have computer which uh, semiconductor which uh, so sent me the sound from the conference but uh, uh, does not have a microphone. Okay. Thank you. I don't know whether you can hear us or not, but we are going to thank you here in the auditorium. Uh, are there any you, I, are there going to be any questions? <laughs> Please be prepared laptop, to ask you. the question as soon as Victor can hear us. Okay, since uh, Victor is not around his head, headset, then we are going to move for now to the third and last uh, presentation of uh, today's session. It's going to be presented by Tian Chan or Michael Monaghan. And the title is Parallel Algorithm for Factoring Multivariate Polynomials in represent, uh, Represented by Black Boxes. Please, uh, could you please share, share your screen? Ребят, вы можете вот этот... Может быть, отсюда смогут ребята? Okay, yeah, we can see you. Could you share your screen, please? Um, can you see the screen? Uh, we can see you, we can hear you, but we can't see your screen, unfortunately. Oh. I'll do that again. I could see everything. <laughs> Somehow we don't see you. I, I see the screen shared. However, in the auditorium we can't. So, uh, <laughs> Let's wait a few seconds until we can see it. It's a technical problem on our side. We can see your screen, so you can start. Please, you have 30 minutes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. Um, parallel algorithms for factoring multivariate polynomials represented by black boxes. My name is Tian Chen, and this is a joint work with my PhD supervisor, Michael Monaghan, and Simon Fraser University in Canada. So our goal is to develop faster parallelizable algorithms to factor multivariate polynomials with uh, coefficients in the ring of integers. Uh, this is the outline below. Um, so first I will define what does it mean by the sparse and the black box representation of a polynomial. And then I will present the algorithm, uh, our own algorithm, CMSHL. Chen Monaghan sparse Hansel lifting. And we're going to modify that for the black box. 
Um, then the complexity analysis for, for the algorithm we can find. And uh, uh, we have a hybrid label and C implementation, uh, then the future work. So first of all, uh, what does it mean by the sparse representation? Um, well, it is, a, um, it is a list consists of coefficients and exponents uh, so that the polynomial can be represented as a sum of, of this. And it is a explicit representation. So for example, the Maple's packed monomial uh, represented uh, representing this polynomial, a very simple one, just three terms. Um, the coefficients are stored with along with the monomials, and the monomials are um, stored as 64 bits digits. On the other hand, the black box representation is a program that accepts input uh, a prime p and um, evaluation point alpha and then it outputs the uh, polynomial evaluated at the point alpha mod prime. So it is an implicit representation and it is very space efficient. So given the black box representation, we can get back the sparse representation uh, in random polynomial time um, by sparse interpolation. So a bit of the background on um, both of the representations and uh, we, um, yeah, so um, on black box, um, either, either it is represented by a sparse representation and we factor the polynomial or it is it can be represented by a black box. So uh, the literature, the earliest one would be uh, one in 75, uh, it is called multivariate Hansel lifting. So it recovers the factors one variable at a time and uh, um, also solves a multivariate dial Fenton equation uh, for, for this uh, sigma i and tau i at each step, one variable at a time. So it can be exponential in, num in the number of variables, depending on the uh, evaluation point we choose. So in the 1980s, then ZL and Kato uh sparse tensile lifting algorithms. Um, taking advantage of the sparsity of the polynomial to be factored. And in 2016, uh, my supervisor and his PhD student, previous PhD student, um, they, they developed a new sparse tensor lifting algorithm, which solves the multivariate dark equation via sparse, uh, sparse interpolation. So they call the algorithm MTSHL. Um, well, last year in the past conference, we presented a, um, a new algorithm, uh, CMSHL. This actually um, improved the version to 2018, and we resolved a uh, long-standing issue of the no, uh, of the expression swell. So there's no expression swell anymore, and uh, it's also highly parallelizable. However, in that um, in in that paper, we found the dominating cost. Uh, was in a step called evaluations. So polynomial evaluations is essentially evaluating the, the polynomial to be factored. Uh, so we want to improve that and, and hence we considered the black box representation. So on the other hand, the black box um, factorizer uh, was only considered by Kettoff in the 1990s and it was implemented in uh, Fox box. However, since then, there has not been any black box factorization algorithms developed. And therefore, um, well, we, we are going to develop new, new algorithms that output the factors directly in, in the sparse representation. Um, so given the, given the polynomial represented by a black box, three ways to get the sparse representations. Well, method zero is what well, we can first, of course, get the sparse representation of the polynomial and then use any sparse Hansel lifting algorithm to factor it. Um, however, we, uh, we do not think that's efficient. So method number one would be kind of triggers method uh, to first get the evaluations of the factors mm -hmm. and then um, sparse interpolate to get the sparse representation. Um, well, we propose method two, which is uh, a new method that outputs factors directly and uh, um, by, yeah, by our modified uh, algorithm, CMSHL. 
So, um, for example, consider the um, an example of toy place matrix, symmetric toy place matrix. The determinant of uh, T4, it has two factors and both have the same number of terms. Well, on the right hand, on the right hand side, the table indicates um, a comparison between the number of terms of the determinant and its factors. Uh, well, the variable S, I haven't explained, uh, um, it, is, um, it is defined as uh, um, the number of bivariate images in the Hansel lifting step. So uh, two things. Method two, um, it has advantages over, um, yeah, over the other two methods because um, the number of terms in, in the factors are much less than the, um, the number of terms in the determinant. So and method two, it, it does not have to store the, the, uh, the polynomial A, um, hence it's quite space efficient. Then method two is also potentially more efficient than method one since this relation S is also much less than the number of terms in the factors. Uh, so this is from our analysis. So given a matrix A, <clears throat> we, um, we can either, of course, um, method zero will be to get the sparse representation and then to factor the polynomial. Um, but we don't really want to do that. So two of the black box methods, <clears throat> method one would be <coughs> the Kelvin Trippis method um, to get the univariate image. Well, that's actually modified um, from, from the method. We're going to use the integer substitutions rather than linear substitutions to get a um, univariate image and then factor that. Uh, we get the uh, univariate images of the factors. Well, we're assuming two factors here, f and g. Um, then we get the evaluations of the factors and then go back um, to the sparse representation by a sparse interpolation process. Um, well, method two is indicated in the, uh, in the line arrow. Um, we also need to get the univariate image directly from the black box. And then uh, after the univariate factorization, we process the uh, uh, sparse Hansel lifting algorithm directly. So for example, um, well, let's compute T4 um, just to demonstrate the method. So choose an evaluation point first, and then get the univariate image, factor that to get two factors in X1 and then choose a prime p. So after the first step, uh, we get back to um, yeah, two, um, two variables. And then another step, um, get three variables back. And then the last step, we finally obtain the true factors. This was the, yeah, this, this was the same as uh, shown on the previous slide. Yeah, so this was the algorithm presented last year in the, in the class conference. Uh, this was the algorithm CMSHR for uh, sparse representation and for two factors. So uh, three uh, sub-major steps, and then they're all um, parallelizable. So the um, so from the analysis, we, we see that the major cost was in evaluations, polynomial evaluations here. And, and um, this year, well, we actually extended the algorithm to multi-factors and it can be used for black box. So the step was replaced by probing the black box. And then, um, yeah, the, the one step was split into two. Um, so one is to um, probe the black box for the polynomial uh, itself. And then the other, we still need to evaluate the factors, but the, uh, the number of terms are much less. Um, so from the complexity analysis, um, so this relation is important. Um, so the number of variables in uh, bivariate images is much less than the number of terms in the factors. And here's a table that is showing for the, the toy place determinants. And the method one requires uh, this number of probes, which is uh, order n d one d max uh, sharp f max um, probes to the black box. 
if we're using Z policy interpolation, the method two order n d one d max s. So the only difference would be s intra max. So you know, the yeah method two should be much more efficient. And uh, here's a table of um, timings for a hybrid make one C implementation. Well, we use the hybrid implementation because um, we want to give users some options to implement, implement different kind of um, polynomials um, easily. And then the output would also be in the, uh, in, yeah, quite, quite easy to see in, in Maple user interface. Um, so there were four major sub steps for, for this one. And um, um, well, I'm just gonna show the timing first and, and um, we're comparing that to Maple's timing. So when n is 13, we are already 10 times faster. Well, this has not been finished yet. So um, for the last Hansel lifting step, for example, when n is 13, it takes 61 seconds. And then the, the um, um, so, so the, uh, the sub steps, um, while probing the black box and then interpolate 16 seconds. And then I, I do begin to see uh, the bottleneck in evaluations of, that, uh, of the factors, um, but um, I have not implemented that into C. So uh, there, are, there are still steps I, I, I want to um, put those into, into C programs. But where Hansel lifting is not the major step, um, it's not the bottleneck yet. And then, yeah, so when n is 14, I have not attempted uh, the, the um, computation in April. In, I would expect it. it's going to take at least a couple of days. Um, so I've, I've, I've done and it equals 14 yesterday. And as, as I expected, I think the um, at the end, it's, it's probably the black box step and uh, or the minimal solve. Uh, can be competing each other. So yeah, I'm, I'm still uh, working on that. And the next immediate goal will be computing determine T15 and the possible speed ups for, for this method, um, different places I want to integrate the C program. And also, of course, I, I want to implement method one and make one just compare the number of probes to the black box and, and make sure that parallel method is, is better. And uh, I need to finish the, the detailed complex analysis with failure probabilities. Um, finally, um, the non-monic factors. Um, I've already considered that, and uh, it's, it's in, in progress. So I'm, I'm still working on this towards a paper. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. Here are the references. Yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you, Tianxia, for a nice presentation. Let's thank. The speaker. Do we have questions in the auditorium? No. What about online? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, what will you do if uh, the determinant is uh, cannot be factorized? Uh. I haven't considered that. So. Uh, but what will happen is that you get the univariate polynomial, the univariate image of the determinant, and it won't factor. And then you can conclude, um, well, not quite, but almost immediately, that it's it doesn't factor. You have to yeah. consider the content, but I think yeah. that's not well, difficult. Imagine, and that's a that's a better shot to to get a you know irreducibility test. I think if it's irreducible, that's kind of the easy case. Okay, thank you for the comment. If there are no any further questions, I suggest we wrap it up. Thank, well, let's thank all the speakers of today's session. Okay, thank you. And I think we are done, right? Do you have any announcements? Yeah, can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, Tian, what? What has been the most difficult part of this work? 
the whole work. Um, yeah, what what has been hard? Well, what I think hmm, well the design first of all is not it's, it's not trivial, and then um, the implementation is is not it's not easy. And some of the speed ups I, I could I could spend days on um, how to get it. Um, yeah, so so I. I this algorithm, for example, the, the calling the black box is, is not a Gaussian elimination here because I'm, I'm using a faster algorithm uh, for the N squared. It's called, um, uh, it's called Barre's algorithm for, for the special, special structures for, um, for toy place matrix. And so, so yeah, e e each of the implementations that they're, they're, they're not easy. Thank you. Any further questions from online? No. Okay. Yeah, I think I think um, just a comment. Um, the maple time includes the time to compute the determinant. Uh, you can see it there that the time to compute the determinant is more than the time it took to factor it. Um, that's because computing the determinants of the Turpitz matrix is is really not easy. So avoiding avoiding computing that determinant is 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 a, a good game here. Okay. Thank you for the Thank comment. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could use that to compute the determinant, right? You use your algorithm to factor it and then you expand the result. Yeah, exactly. You could do it that way. It would be well, ten times faster. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't and, have to. Yeah, we are computing the determinant and we're getting it in factored form, which is better. Yeah. It works uh, with not sparse matrices. I mean, uh, not doublets like, but something more general. I mean, the uh, efficiency increase in this fashion of computing the determinant. So I tried non-special uh, spec structured ones, and, and this time uh, is slightly uh, greater, but not much greater. Oh, OK. OK, thank you. OK, I think we are done. Okay. Let me just say hi to Francois if you're still here, and hi to Victor if you're still here. Okay, no, unfortunately, uh, as far as I can see, Francois is not here, and neither is Victor, but there are many friends and colleagues and many new people from well, mainly from Russia, but also from uh, a few from foreign countries, which was not easy at all at these times. And I'd like to thank again everyone, the technical support people and everyone meeting people in the airport. Thank you so much. And we resume tomorrow at 9.30 local time in Sochi. Thanks a lot. We close now. <laughs>